Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 105 of the American Muslim Experience, and I am your host, Pervez Ahmed. Uh, this is a little bit of a different episode. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining. Um, I was uh, recently invited on to the Sultans and Sneakers podcast that uh, Maheen Islam um, has been doing for a while now. Uh, Maheen is uh, the anchor over at the Mad Mamluks podcast. Um, for those who are not familiar, the Mad Mum Luke's podcast is a weekly variety podcast as well as YouTube, YouTube channel. And they've been providing content in this space, uh, in the Muslim podcasting space, I should say, for quite some time. And Maheen is one of the uh, uh, anchors over there, um, as well as um, on the side, Maheen has been doing and pursuing his own podcast uh, and that is the Sultans and Sneakers uh, podcast. And so uh, Mahin and I have had a very con- uh, uh, cordial and congenial relationship for quite some time, uh, sharing thoughts on a variety of issues related to Muslim podcasting, as it were. Um, and so we decided to sort of get on, um, put it on wax, as we say, and uh, kind of uh, share a discussion and a conversation around uh, kind of the methodology behind uh, platforming certain voices within the Muslim community, uh, providing a space um, and a, and an, essentially a platform for uh, voices and guests within the Muslim community. And so we thought it'd be great to kind of have a conversation around that. The conversation took us into uh, a discussion around the burgeoning and kind of growing um, subset of Muslim influencers, thought leaders, others who um, in certain Muslim circles have been defined or characterized as the ah right or the ahi right, uh, kind of a derivative of the alt right. Um, and so we had a conversation about that as well. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously the Mad Mamluks um, has been on my radar for quite some time. Uh, they started. Uh, uh, podcasting a few years after this show began. Um, and it's one that I've listened to on occasion. I can't say that I've uh, uh, looked at or listened to um, a, uh, a, a a great amount of their content. But uh, um, And while I may not always agree with either the guest or the approach that the Man Mum Lukes takes on their podcast, um, I welcome the idea to have a conversation with Maheen uh, regardless of whether it was for his own individual podcast or perhaps at some future point, um, even with the Mad Mom Lukes, because I think having a robust discussion about, uh, uh, you know, what it is that we do in this space as Muslims is important. I think it is important to have a robust debate, conversation with people we agree with, as well as people we may not always see eye to eye with. Um, certainly the kind of fractures that we've seen emerge not only in the Muslim community, but also with the with society at large, I think conversation, discussion uh, is healthy and it makes for a better uh, community. It makes for better uh, uh, a, a better sort of approach to um, examining the kind of issues that people and Muslims within this space are examining. And like I said, regardless of what perspective uh, or approach, they may uh, they may bring to their uh, specific medium or their specific uh, content uh, platform, and so anyway, um, it was a great uh, conversation. It's one that I welcome here at Diffuse Congruence as well, and uh, uh, we thought this would be a great sort of cross uh, pollination and crossover experience uh, for those who uh, come come at us from the comic book universe. This is just sort of expanding the multiverse, as it were, of possibilities. So um, anyway, I hope you give it a listen. I hope you enjoy. Uh, give it a listen. I hope you enjoy. Um, please, as always, uh, you can email us feedback at, G- at, at diffusecongruence at gmail.com, facebook.com com slash diffusecongruence. You can hit me up individually at Pervez F. Ahmed on Twitter, uh, as well as the uh, podcast uh, Twitter, which is at Diffuse C. Um, and folks, um, for those who listen, for those who always listened, um, please, I do hope you take a uh, few minutes of your time. Uh, go visit patreon.com slash diffuse congruence. Become uh, a, a monthly patron, uh, even a dollar a month, whatever it is that you feel 
uh, is, uh, is, is the, is, is, is the kind of patron level that you would like to join at because every little helps. And, uh, any of those monies that we raise monthly, um, go into, uh, providing the kind of content that we provide, bringing on the kind of guests that we've been able to bring on now going on seven plus years. And we hope to continue doing that and doing that not only the near, but also long-term future. So please do become a patron of the show. And as always, thank you for listening and listen out for our next episode. Thank you as always for listening to Diffuse Congruence. Internets, welcome to episode 36 of the Sultans and Sneakers podcast. I'm your host, Mahin the Podcaster. Now, most of y'all know me first and foremost as a co-host of the Mad Mom Luke's podcast, which many would argue is the most popular and consistent Muslim podcast out there. After 200 episodes, we're still going strong. However, before the Mad Mom Luke's was ever a thought, in fact, before I even connected with my new, with my now co-hosts, there was the OG Muslim podcast, Diffuse Congruence. And I've been a listener of that show since 2015. And for this episode, I was honored to be joined by Diffuse Congruence co-host, Parvez Ahmed. We discussed various approaches around podcasting and went in deep on how we decide whether or not to platform a guest. And finally, we talked about this group that exists in the Muslim community known as the Ahrite. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, you can support me in two ways. I recently started a Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash sultans and sneakers. So any cash you can throw there will help as there are ongoing costs of this project. And if you can't do that, then please leave a five-star review on iTunes and spread the word. I'm on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can shoot me an email at info at sultansandsneakers.com. I always love hearing from my audience. With that being said, I hope you enjoy episode 36 with Parvez Ahmed. All right, back at it with another podcast for Sultan Sneakers. And I'm here with, with, with the role model, man. You, Parvez Ahmed from Diffuse Congruence. I mean, listening to your show before, I was even a, like, a, like, I, I was not even in existence yet. <laughs> so I want to appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time to come on. We, we have all these offline conversations about podcasting and methodology and platforming and all that. And I just thought it would be just a great thing for folks to hear. Um, two guys, um, and I, I would say, is it safe bet to say you guys are the longest running Muslim podcast as far as I know? Yeah, you know, to tell you the truth, yeah, I, I haven't dug in. I haven't dug into the history, uh, but I, that that would probably appear to be so. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, and we're probably I, the, also the oldest dudes doing podcasts. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you said you said you started listening to me, or, or yeah, Diffuse Congruence has been around before you were in existence. So, uh, yeah, I'm like a dinosaur here. Um, but uh, th- this may be one of those occasions where the where the student has surpassed the teacher because uh, you have mastered the art, my friend. Uh, you and your whole crew out there. Well, I mean, I, um, you, you are, I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure you got, you're the longest running. And I, first of all, define podcasting as the, to- the form where you're having some kind of casual conversation or it's one person in a monologue kind of speaking to an audience, but not a lecture. So when people, sometimes people say Muslim central is a podcast or like, the Qadlam Institute Sira series or Yasser Qadi Sira series is a podcast. I don't think that's a podcast. I think that's audio that's captured from another platform that is then put on the podcast app. I don't or know. More what- recently, like Sheikh Hamza's, Hamza Yusuf's sacred text messaging, right? Messages. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of some of that. But I yeah, have. That's basically, you know, him ruminating, reflecting on the tradition, right? So, but yeah. you're right. It's, 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 it's a, it's a monologue, right? It's, it's I think a, that's a, po- that, that, yeah, but that would count as a podcast to me. So, oh, I, okay. So then yeah, flesh yeah, that out a little. Yeah, right. I, I would, I would, I don't think it necessarily has to be an interview style show, oh. but I think that like when it's a, because he's making that for a podcast, right? Got it. It's more I like when now. there's a lecture or, you know, 
you look on the Muslim Central, you yeah. want to pull up some old Imam Siraj Hajj tape and bust it out. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think I th- that's how uh, I'm a real stickler when it comes to podcasting. I'm like, I prefer the audio. I deal with YouTube. I know you guys are audio only and somebody puts up some stuff on YouTube for you guys, but yeah. And I'd love to, it's just like unsolved mysteries. I'd love to find out who that person is. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching this show or listening, uh, but uh, I want to thank you. I, we've, we've, we've thanked that person on the show. I know. Um, but yeah, uh, unsolved mystery. W- what are your thoughts though on audio versus video versus some one thing solo? W- what are your thoughts on, on, on that? Or you have any thoughts? Yeah, well, uh, to tell you, yeah, I mean, we've had more than one person kind of mention how they'd love to see. Well, actually, let me kind of step back a second. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, just even affording me uh, the honor of being on your show. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I and, and like you said, I mean, yeah, we've been doing the show for a while. Uh, you and I met actually finally. I think we had, we had traded some messages and then we met on, on, a, on a trip of mine in, to Chicago maybe a couple years ago, or maybe, uh, I don't know, I've lost track of time as we move, uh, you know, uh, line- linear time as we know it. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think it was it was probably a couple of years ago. But uh, anyway, thank you, Maheen, for, for having me on the show. Um, but uh, yeah, to, to your question, um, yeah, so we've heard that in terms of feedback about why, well, why don't we put out video content. Um, tell you the truth, I think it started off because uh, – I, I like you, I'm a stickler on certain things. Um, I, I would love to kind of go back to that conversation about what we define as podcast versus what we don't. Um, what I am a stickler on, or at least I like to be in theory, uh, doesn't always play out is quality. And so for me, you know, if we're going to put out content, you know, video and or audio, I just want to make sure it's of a certain caliber. And we've struggled with this issue just in terms of an audio format. Um, let alone trying to delve into uh, a video type interface. So I was like, well, if we're having so many challenges uh, that we've had to confront from the audio perspective, like I don't even want to think about what we would encounter from a video perspective. Again, just given my kind of um, anal retentive kind of personality when it comes to these kinds of things or being a stickler about these kinds of things. So that's kind of why, I, for me at least, has been the impediment for why we haven't gone to video. Uh, if presented, I think with a, uh, I mean, one with the budget to be able to do so, and, and number two, to, you know, to have it at a certain caliber, uh, then yeah, I'm not averse to it. I, I think it would actually enhance the experience. Uh, you know, if me and well, let's just go back in time. Me and Zucky, you know, talking with the Imam Zaid, like I'd love there, I'd love for that to be on video. Uh, or me and Zucky with Dr. Omer, right in your neck of the woods, you know, and, and, you know, I'd love for that to be on video because, well, I don't want to, I don't want to give a long winded answer, but to me, it goes back to the very intent of the show, uh, diffuse congruence, which was at least from my perspective, I mean, Zucky shared his thoughts and, and we more or less coalesced. Otherwise, it would, you know, the show wouldn't have come to fruition. But from my perspective, it was really about an oral history. It was really about capturing people's stories uh, through the format of long form interview. Uh, and so for me, if, if we're capturing these people's stories, then yeah, a video would be wonderful to have that as ter- in terms of a, uh, uh, in terms of a, of a, uh, uh, what's the word? Like a record of it. So sure. yeah, absolutely. You know, when you guys started, you guys had like, what was the, the, was that the goal? You just saw all these, like, you know, pioneer sages um with untold stories people didn't know some of the origin stories and you just wanted to capture it that's right uh i remember as a graduate student in you know in michigan one of the things that i worked on was an oral history project of capturing uh arab american stories i, I was uh, kind of i was working as a ta and my uh my advisor slash the professor i was taing for had me work on the project with her and uh uh I loved it. I loved those experiences of being able to go in uh, with a recording device um, and 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 then just sit with these people and have them share their stories. I can't tell you know how many living rooms in Dearborn I sat in uh, and just having people share their stories. So um, I, I I really enjoyed that experience and just from a uh, I guess from my own personal like not academic or professional background, my own sort of personal. A uh, journey has been filled with opportunities to sit with elders, sit with people who are, you know, who are part of my family and community. 
and and I've 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 just I, I've cherished those experiences throughout my life. And so for me, you know, that was really the impetus. It was like I want to capture these people's stories. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, let's capture their stories. Um, and so that was my number one intention. Uh, I had a couple of other sort of intentions, which we can you know discuss or not. But mm. the, yeah, that was certainly for me uh, kind of a primary objective. I mean, for because when I when I think of a, a project that's seven years running, and I'm just like, what? It because you know we were talking during the height, the first height of the pandemic. Now we're in second wave, but it seemed like everybody was starting a podcast up back in like June and July. Remember? Yeah. And it's like, and I don't know how many will you know how many have even flaked out since then it seems like you know there's like um there, to me i was having this conversation with um myself and sim who's the who's the founder of the mad memloops right we were at, we were having steak with yasser qadi maybe like three years ago um and uh he was a uh, tell he was asking us about monetization like what were we do we have a plan and sim was always like no he's very idealistic like no we want to do it you know, for the sake of God, and we want to keep money out of it, which I fundamentally disagree with, by the way. Um, uh, which is part one of the reasons I started my, my own my channel. the capitalist. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I and Yasser Gandhi was like, listen, if you guys, you'll eventually burn out or something because the volume and frequency mm-hmm. we're putting out um, podcasts. Um, yeah. You know we weren't making money, but it was like a hot, like, you know, was it a hobby, but it was a hobby that we were putting a lot of time into. We were flying to conventions um, and okay. recording like six, seven episodes in a row. Sometimes like I'd be in a, like a back, like I remember at the Texas Dawa convention, we were set up in this, um, you know, back room or at Isna in the booth. And I'm like, Hey, bring the next guest in. It was just going. And I'd be like skipping lunch. You didn't care. Yeah. But I think his, his Yasser Qadi's point to us was like, listen, because at the end of the day, if you could dedicate your full, if this is what you guys really like to do, if you could dedicate everything to it, which would reco- be, which should be able to replace your full time income, and I think he hadn't thought about it. We had thought about we thought about it since, but again, I think that's something that for me is a driving factor. It's always in the back of my head mm-hmm. because I want to at least have the option. To have some a separate source of income, and something you realize people realize during a pandemic, you can't rely on you can't rely on a corporation to protect you. I think it's oh, yeah. it's a thing of like you have to figure out multiple ways. And I think there's so many angles around podcasting that people can monetize. It's always been yeah. a back of my head. I'm not making yeah. any money, by the way, like or barely a few cents or whatever, like one or two patrons I have on this channel. But that's always been the back. So for you, I don't. What do you think has been key for longevity? I want to say passion. Um, and that's going to sound corny, but, um, you know, it's true. Like for me, at least, uh, my, my, my wish list of people that I haven't spoken to, uh, outnumbers the people we've already, already spoken to in seven years. Mm. So, so for me, it's, it's really that passion. Um, as corny as that sounds, um, but I mean, I think you are you, on the West Coast. You are, you're in the Bay Area. So that's, that's where the, that's where idealism is born. <laughs> yeah, but I come by way of Texas. So I've got, you know, right? I mean, so uh I, I'm a Texas boy at heart. Um, but yeah, definitely living in California has had its had its share of of influences. Um yeah, so to so to me, I want to say, yeah, I mean, passion and uh, you know, frankly, I think in terms of uh and, and that's kind of an internal, if you will, um uh, factor to what I attribute to the longevity. But if I think of external factors, right? Because we're also we're guided by, you know, are people listening? Do people care? You know, what is the feedback? I mean, you know, you're going to put out content, uh, whether you whether you acknowledge it or not. Maybe even um, that's that's certainly part of the calculus. So for me, you know, it was like so. So, so when I think about that, you know, from that perspective, like in terms of the audience and, and the feedback and, and people listening, uh, you know, to me, that's still a driving factor. I mean, people still come up to us, uh, you know, and, and tell us how much they enjoy the show or, uh, you know, just today I had someone, I was on this WhatsApp, I'm on a WhatsApp thread discussing politics, but, but whatever the point is, I, you know, we're discussing something entirely different and somebody was just like, Oh, by the way, you know, went back, I, I, I'd, I'd kind of dropped off for a few episodes, went back and I've been listening to your, 
um, you know, deep dive into Shiism that you did a few months ago, really enjoying it. You know, just, just that, you know, just a whatever offhand comment, sort of comment or, um, um, compliment like that. And I say, you know what, great people are listening, you know? So, yeah. So to me, that also continues to motivate me. Um, and like I said, it, it really kind of goes back to why I got involved with, or why the, the sort of project took off to begin with, which was, you know, I still want to be, I, I, I want to just be that vehicle where people get to come on and, and share their stories. And I hope that I've gotten better at asking those questions so that people can, can kind of, you know, can, can be vulnerable and talk about their stories and their experiences. So, mm-hmm. because I mean, right. And I think Mahi, you'll definitely appreciate this. I mean, cause you're, you're up against, I mean, certainly, you know, within a certain cal within a certain, uh, demographic of our show, uh, i.e. the guests that we have, you're dealing with like kind of a tradition, uh, a, 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 a comportment, an adab, if you will, where, you know, you don't talk about yourself. You don't sit there and talk about, you know, what your accomplishments and it's just, right. It's just not something that we do in our tradition. And so when you're sitting across from a great scholar or someone like an alim and, and, you know, you're asking them to talk about, you know, things that, like I said, kind of tra- get into that kind of territory um, you know, people are, are reticent to do that. But I, I hope that, again, we've been able to kind of navigate beyond that and still get people to talk about, you know, their stories um, without feeling like they're, you know, uh, you know what I mean? Like violating uh, their own sort of comportment about talking about themselves. Right. So I'll I'll, I'll tell you when I, I first, I think I first came across you guys in around 2015. I, I, I think I've been listening to podcasts via Apple apps or, um, you know, since probably 2009 or eight, I used to download the, the podcast of the old iPods. <laughs> like I had the iPod mini, like the freaking silver oh, one with the oh, yeah. screen. Yeah. And then I had the nano. Um, and so I would download podcasts to the, you'd have to download them from your computer, mm-hmm. to this iPod. Now you just stream every, you have your phone. I don't download anything anymore. I just, I have yeah. subscribed like 40 shows, but I want to say I was in Ohio and I was um, about to drive to Pittsburgh um, for work um, and I was visiting my parents, kind of make a pit stop in Ohio when I was on Pittsburgh. And I was like, I was figuring to search Islam podcast or something. I, okay. think, I, I don't know what crossed my mind. I yeah. found you guys and it was like Imam Zaid, Osama Cannon and Dr. Omar, I think already there. Um, yeah. Right. And I was just like, this is good stuff. So, yeah. but I would be frustrated because your frequency was like, I have to wait a month for another podcast. Yeah. Or something. Or something. It'd be, it'd be a while. Um, be a is while. that something that like um, sometimes I almost feel like you are in this kind of danger zone for his rhythm. Hmm. Like, do you ever feel like you, when you go, cause you don't, you don't hear from you for like a month or two yeah. months or three months. Right. You're like, are they still around? Is this still <laughs> happening? Like what's going on? Like, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? If you talk about the frequency, can you talk about, like trying to get that rhythm going. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and you're right. Um, I guess, I guess I mean, to be, to tell you the truth, I haven't really sort of thought about it. Um, but you're making me think about it, which is good. Um, uh, you're right. I mean, I think there is, I think the very format, uh, so, so the very medium, I should say, sorry, the medium, the podcast medium is fickle. Uh, and especially now when you have, uh, you're dealing with a space that is, and I use this word in the most sort of Muslim, you know, uh, friendly, you know, love for your brother, what you love for yourself kind of vibe, um, you know, competitive space for, uh, for, for downloads and listens, then yeah, you're right. I mean, you're dealing with an audience that is potentially very fickle. And if they don't hear from you for like a month or six weeks, they check out or they go to the next best thing or what have you. Um, but yeah, so so that it, it, that's always been, I guess, the, you know, if I if like I said, you you asking me to think about this, I'm sort of thinking it through. That has certainly been a concern. Um, I, I will say, any of those lulls or or those uh, the, those periods of of uh, of infrequency uh, or periods of delay have been the result of external factors, um, never by design. Uh, like we don't do like a mid season break or anything like that. Um, with the help of Zucky, you know, uh, we've, we've spun it that way, like in, in hindsight, like, Oh, we're back from our winter hiatus. Like, okay. That's a great way to put a spin on the fact that you just were you know, missing in action for two months. Uh, but anyway, now I'm really kind of showing my hand, but, um, uh, um, but yeah, 
uh, the uh, so so uh, we've never been that way in terms of like a break or anything like that, or even frankly, and you've noticed this, I'm sure, and this is probably something you guys think about, which is seasons. We've never been kind of like, okay, this is season three on you know on diffuse congruence. Um, and again, that's only been by kind of like spin or we try to kind of cover our, 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 you know, cover our bases when it comes to delays. Mm -hmm. So, but I agree with you. I, I think you're dealing with a, a, a competitive space. You're dealing with an audience that, you know, there's enough content out there where the, you know, it can, it can be a fickle audience, but I, I have to, I, I do have to also kind of at the same time, while I say that that is the space and that is the audience. We've got our long timers, man. We've got our listeners who've been listening to us from the very beginning and they still love our content. I mean, you know, again, that's not, you know, um, I'm not saying that out of any sort of, um, you know, arrogance. I mean, they, but, but, or, 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 I'm, you know, but, I, but it is something I'm proud of, which is, you know, we've got listeners who are, who have been it, who've been in it through the, through the whole hall and, and they still continue to listen to our content. Um, and I and I and I I think I'm also comfortable saying that because I don't think that that so much has to do with us as host as much as it as it as it has to do with our guest, right? So uh, anyway, um, I don't know if that answered your question. It, or if it you does, wanna... you know. So so I, I, my one of my perceptions was is that the reason was is that because I've always felt like you guys have had very high profile guests, like these are like household <laughs> names in the community, and because of that. Um, it just it makes it more difficult because you guys are at what episode a hundred and s just cost episode hundred recently, right? For sure, uh, right. we're past hundred. I don't know the exact number. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Terrible. So I think, but I think your guests are always like very well known people, like people who are, who are like Asif Manvi. He had that show. Um, mm -hmm. What show was that called? Five. I mean, I I, I don't, the sitcom. I, I, Oh I'm, yeah, he had that uh, that Muslim Cosby show thing he did. Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, I went yeah, to a yeah. screening of that. You know, uh, I forgot what it was called. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, it's I remember going to a screening, but like Imam Zaid, Dr. Omar, to start off a podcast with like big names like this and kind of keeping it consistent. Mm. Um, you know, I was like, Imam, you got Imam Siraj Wahaj, right? I mean, we both have been like. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is like the elusive one that like, right. <laughs> um, exactly. be, you know, but, but I, so I, th I think that I, I, I would always understand it that way is like you guys had a certain threshold of guests yeah. that right. had to be met. Um, and the availability of those individuals were just, um, would dictate the frequency. Well said. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I think that when you was, yeah, I, I think without even kind of intentionally going about it that way it, yeah you're right i mean one, once you give your audience once you allow the audience to expect next week's episode to feature someone like a doctor oh sorry not next week but next month's episode to feature someone like a dr omar or a dr jackson you know imam siraj imam zaid you got to keep kind of upping the ante right it's like mm -hmm. okay so you're right i mean that's kind of forced us to uh sometimes you know has resulted in delays um, I've moved away from that. I mean, just by virtue one of the fact that, I mean, you're dealing with a finite amount of people who are, you know, who kind of qualify, not to say that people who haven't been on the show don't qualify. So, you know, to all of the people who haven't been on the show yet, um, you know, you are superstars in my, uh, in my book, but I'm just saying like, you know, you're going to run out of, the, the point is you're going to run out of personalities mm -hmm. or, or individuals. Um, and so I would say we've tried moving away from that where we're more comfortable about uh, or, or we're more keen on having a conversation about a topic, for example. Um, and I think certainly if you look at our COVID era episodes, yeah. um, they've been certainly more uh, topical than they mm -hmm. have been, um, you know, biographical. Right, right. But I would say for the most part, I can appreciate the fact that you guys have, it seems like you guys had a structure, a vision. Like if somebody, were to ask me as a listener of diffuse congruence, what are they about? I was mm -hmm. like, they are, I was like, you're going to get an origin story, right? It's going to be a long form show and it's not going to be too much interjection by the guests, by the host. Sorry. So it's not going to, they're not going to hear too much of you guys pontificating. It's going to be like that, you know? And yeah. so that's the kind of type of dialogue it is. Right. I think that um, when people ask what mad Mamluks is, I think we always struggle. Like in the beginning, it was like, okay, if somebody would ask me, I was like, yeah, we talk to people who are doing interesting work in the Muslim community. That's what I used to tell people. It's kind of evolved in a way. 
Um, and we can certainly talk about that. And I, yeah, I, I was going to say no, in the I middle of that, I'm having to, I find myself switching hats here, like from guest on podcast to, host. to, 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 yeah, yeah. host on podcast. Yeah. And Cause I have like 10 burning questions I want to yeah. ask you. So <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, first of all, like before we get into that, I'll tell you this. So I, I think I may have shared this to you before. Um, I was approached by, um, you know, a former member of the team when I was, I, I was in an Arabic class with her and back in 2016. So in the first, she, she was kind of telling us like, you know, Hey, this new podcast started up. You guys should check it out. And I told her like, um, cause I was listening to, you know, there's all kinds of, t- I, I, a bunch of sports shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Tim Ferriss, um, some stuff for work to help me with at work. And I was just like, I already have, I already listened to a Muslim podcast, Fuse Congruence. I don't have space for another one. That's what I told her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Mad Mom looks that's just started, and I think, uh, uh, but then I think I was kind of a cl- I was like the class clown, like a what a thirty five, thirty four year old class clown in in some Arabic class where there's <laughs> teenagers in there too, right? You right. know, and the teacher is like twenty one, and so he's like always doing face palm and because of the stuff I said in class, right? right. right. Um, so you know, so one day she was like, you know what, maybe you should come on the show sometime. And I was also suggesting her guests like you guys, cause I was like, I checked out the show. I was like, your show's pretty good, but uh, your frequency isn't enough. You guys should get, and Mad Mumlu started as a Chicago only thing. It was right. all basically like the guys we do in Chicago, just show up to our basement and start recording. Right. 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 Um, but the banter back then was very different, you know? Mm. Um, and so I jumped on board and then I would tell like Sim, who's my producer. I told them about diffuse congruence. I was like, yeah, I, I listen this, this. Have you guys heard of, have you heard of him? And he's like, nah, I never heard of him. He checked them out. He's like, and his perception was like, Oh, this is the, looks like the American Sufi experience. And oh, I was like, interesting. You know? Yeah. And I was like, well, I could see that, but like everyone has their ideologies. Yeah. Fair enough. He's like, fair enough. Right. People are inclined a certain way. Um, so I know when you guys first got Joe Bradford, I was like, yes. Mm-hmm. somebody like who kind of you know and I, I think you guys talked a little bit about salafism too which i that, that was a great episode um you know from a content point of view so i think that's where mm-hmm. um so i've always like enjoyed you guys but i think one of the reasons i want to have this conversation is that i think we represent mad mamluks even though this is not a mad mamluk show it's sultan sneakers no no right? please but as a as but a mad host mamluks, co-host yeah, yeah. I, I i i was you know as the anchor for th- over three plus years i've kind of taken a step back because i'm i got my own sh- i got my own show now but um as the main anchor as a- i also hosted the yakin institute podcast for about a year so oh, i really? feel like I- yeah okay. i did i you know um they, they nice. that was like a that was a paid gig um so i was an employee of yakin institute for, for for a short time um you know while they were doing that kind of this kind of like podcast format but i think we represent two different angles of the muslim community and i want to show people that like Hey, we could have two people who are representing two different angles of the community. Two shows. Yeah. Two shows, but okay. also like I think two different niches almost in a way. Please and flesh that. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, talk about that. Like we you know. can like still have a like like but but we're cool. That's the thing. It's That's like, true. and I think the community needs to see that. The community feels like we're on team this, and they forget the Islam part of it. I'm like, yo, that per that other team is still Muslim. Mm-hmm. You might have a political difference or some kind of ideological difference or organizational difference. You don't like who they roll with, but they're still Muslim. And I think you, there's still a basic respect that has to be given there. And I mm-hmm. think we've lost that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. You, okay. So I, I should have been taking notes here because I've got so <laughs> much. And I, I want to, I, I hope I remember this. So sure. to go back to something you said a while back in terms of like, what is the elevator pitch for diffuse congruence, right? Like yeah. If you were to, summarize if someone comes up to me and say, hey man you 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 co-host this show what's it about so my elevator pitch is always like this um is uh are you familiar with npr okay yeah you are uh on npr there's a show call called uh fresh air with terry gross we're fresh air with terry gross we are not uh this american life on on the on the same on 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 on, on npr so you take sort of it's the it's the tale of two shows you've got npr doing This American Life, and you've got NPR doing Fresh Air. We're Fresh Air, right? Not to say that you guys are This American Life. I'm just saying, like, that's how I present the, like, that's that's my elevator pitch for Diffuse Congruence. Now, 
you all, I, I, you know, more often than I want to admit, I encounter people like well, Terry Gross, like fresh air, what's that, you know? So then of course, then I have to kind of rethink the whole thing, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and you definitely don't want to get into like PBS, Charlie Rose hour because then Charlie Rose you're dealing with anyway. Sorry. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> You're going to get canceled and me too. Um, but, but, but so like, but to your point about, okay, so let me l- l- like, again, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking back to all the things you brought up. The first time that people's perception of the show even crossed my radar or even came across my radar, I'll be honest with you, Mahim was the, I think you texted me or you called me can't remember i think that this is before we had met maybe or right after and i without naming names um there was a certain someone a, a scholar a, a, a reputable scholar with kind of a very uh active sort of online social media presence who had made i don't think there were disparaging remarks but it basically characterized diffuse congruence as and you can maybe help me here about what the exact quote was. I, but I, I, I think it was very, it was almost like f- fluffy. Fluffy. That was the word. Thank yeah. you. Fluffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I heard that. And, he, and then, it, well, like I said, you brought it to my radar. So you brought it to my attention. I, I listened to that particular episode and I was like, okay, that's interesting. Now one, I, like I said, I didn't take that as a slight I, because I, 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 I heard his comments in the overall co- uh, uh, context of the conversation. Um, and, you know, he had some views about the study Quran, and one of our recent guests had 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 praised, uh, uh, had had extraordinary amount of praise for the noble uh, for the for the study Quran. I think that was sort of a you know uh, irked him a little bit, mm-hmm. and then it was kind of like yeah, fluffy. So then I, it, but it, what it afforded me was it, it made me kind of sit and think and 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 say, you know, that's a really interesting comment, and like you know, how do we come across? To a segment of the of the of the community or population who has not heard of the sh- or has not heard the show but has heard of the show, and maybe hearing about the show from other people, uh, and so I mean, frankly, it made me kind of conscious about you know uh, like are we putting forth like are we basically showing our hand as it were with regards to what is our own ideology because my intent was always to keep that uh, outside of the show. Mm. Like it was never, and, I, and I'll go on record right here as saying this, and I know I've mentioned this on on diffuse congruence, but uh, we've never intentionally put forth or put forward a particular uh, manha, you know, minhaj or a particular ideology or anything like that. We've tried to be as um, you know ideologically agnostic as possible. Um, having said that, yes. It, just by virtue of metrics and if you look at like if you want to start you know putting making columns and and you know uh if you, you get a spreadsheet of all the guests we've had and you put them sufi salafi whatever comment you know ca- uh, uh, column yeah you might see more checks in the sufi category but by no means was that intentional it was kind of like well we have access to these people you know mm-hmm. uh and so it was again not by design uh, but by just the, uh, you know, in terms of who we were able to approach. So I want to, so the, I, I do want to mention that. So, and I, and I, and I hope I've still, that the show still remains kind of, uh, uh or ha- maintains a certain fidelity to that idea mm-hmm. that we don't yeah. want to get ideological. I just as happy uh, as, or, or I would just be as happy as having Imam uh, or Sheikh Hamza on the show as I would Yasser Qadi, you right. know? Um, and so, you know, again, not by design. Now, now, what, what I wanted, what I would love to kind of talk to you about is, and something I think the last time you and I were texting and kind of led to this, hey, why don't you come on the show and we can talk about this, which is where do you, like, where do you sort of self-censorship? Like in terms of what, where, where do you kind of draw the line as a show and say, and say, yes, I'm, I'm ideologically agnostic, but I'm not going to give a platform to you know x y and z right mm, yeah. brother fulan 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 like where do you like so where do you draw the line i'm, I'm curious i would love to have that conversation with you but i guess before we go there though i want to make sure that you feel that we've adequately kind of yeah. talked about yeah uh, so i i I, the issues think, you I, raised. I i remember i, I remember the situation now so just uh like you know i i want to say it was you were in a whatsapp group 
and somebody had mentioned it. That's how you were, ar- you know, had mentioned oh, that. Oh, you're right. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Now, but I, I think you had a under. I think we had we had not yeah we had not met yet. But yeah. I would comment on your whenever you guys made a post on YouTube. If I really enjoyed the episode. I would comment on it, and then so and by this point, you knew who I was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, always, I think you, there's already. A and I'll be level. honest. I mean, you're the only, you're the only host or, or uh, how'd you put it? Anchor uh, yeah. of, uh, of, of, of uh, man, my moves that I've, that I know. I mean, right. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. But like we, and again, that. not by design, I'd love to meet the brothers. Yeah. And, uh, I th- I think Sim and Amr may know Zucky somehow because from Chicago yeah. connections. That's right. Um, You know, and to be fair, and I want to just for whoever's listening out there, you know, you, you, you've tried to make it happen. You've tried, mm-hmm. you know, when me and Zucky were in Chicago, you've yeah. tried even remotely. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not like, again, none of this is by design, right? We're not, yeah, yeah. we're not, we're not, we're not kind of, when you guys come to town, it's like very tight. Yeah. So I, I think it's, I, I, I think there's enough space for multiple post Muslim podcasts. Um, but I think everyone should have their own niche too. I, I, I think there's like, if people are doing the same thing, it does, it, it's kind of pointless. Like if we were to just uh, do the same kind of interviews to the same guests, that's kind of, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense, yeah. but uh, yeah. So I, I think that you, when we, I, I forgot how we'd reached out, but you were, I was commenting. So I yeah. felt like there was already a comfort level there. Sure. And, since you knew I liked your your content, and I was on the show where this comment was made, it was fair to like bring it up, and and so we had a chance to talk about it over coffee and stuff. So yeah, I mean for us, I would say the ground rules always. I, we've never had a, a Shia person on. Okay. Um, I think we've all. I think for us, the person could not have any like blatant red flags, like theologically. Mm. If I if you know th- that's kind of what it came down to. Um, it's, it, it was always like an unwritten rule. I think we used to have like some Shia listeners in the past. Okay. So we would, um, sometimes we would try to be careful about that, but, um, that's gotten by the wayside <laughs> because my, my co-host Mortaza Siddiqui, AKA Mort, popular as Mort is part oh. of Sunni defense league now, which is like, has a lot of like. She anti Shia pol- polemics stuff going on. I haven't so, even heard. Of them. I haven't heard of them. Sorry, my, my if, 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 if it's like another sphere. It's like so. You've always got like these. Like um, we're all very different hosts too, right? Um, if you, if I want to sum up, like like I, I myself, you know, kind of came, came into the dean through the Salafi Dawa, and then um, kind of moved towards the more traditional Sufi under orientation. You know, especially when I moved to Chicago, right? Um, but yeah, and, and, and I'd, I'd be happy to share that as well, by the way, you know, yeah. I've, I've, again, uh, just by virtue of how we, for, how we've constructed our show, I don't get into it a whole lot. Right. Um, people, it seeps through and some of my, you know, as I'm sort of gushing with a guest or, you know, talking with a guest, it comes out, but I, I've always kind of, I've kept my own, as it were, origin story kind of, uh, kind of, uh, yeah. What's the word? You know, like, I, I don't know, ambiguous, not ambiguous, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I just, you, I haven't gone into it. You have a similar back. In, in there a is, a similar that's background, right. so, and that's what I even kind of jolted my memory or, 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 or kind of maybe kind of even comment because what you just shared with like kind of coming from like a kind of a pseudo Salafi or what have you, neo Salafi, um, uh, kind of a, uh, 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 background and then kind of gravitating towards perhaps a, a more sort of you know, Sufi oriented approach outlook um, that that very much kind of echoes my own experiences. Uh, although there was a lot of stops along the way, and and there was a, there was even a there was even some you know uh, connections or some important you know roots prior to my sort of uh, uh, indulgence in, in Salafism. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and w- when we're on the subject of I mean, Salafism, and we've mentioned his name a few times, and I don't think that he'd mind me saying this. Sure. I mean, you know, Yasser, Yasser and I were contemporaries at the University of Houston. I mean, Yasser was, uh, a, a, I think a couple, maybe a year or two junior to me age wise, but, um, Yasser being the very bright, uh, student that he is, um, was c- ahead of me, uh, academically. So young, younger by age, but older than me academically. And now, older than me, um, you know, uh, intellectually as well. But, uh, but, uh, but anyway, so, so yeah, Yasser and I kind of go back and we've I've certainly had that history, um, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, part of my, 
sorry. You were and that's o- and that's old school Yasser Qadi. That's like this something is Yasser Qadi. This is like this is date us. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. date me and Yasser again. I, I hope he doesn't mind. But you know, I I, I started college in 1992, um, and so Yasser and I, I think overlapped for two or three years, right prior to him moving to. Uh, you know, uh, Jamia Med- uh, Medina. So before you moving to Medina, and and my indoctrination, if I, if you allow me to use such a kind of loaded term, mm-hmm. into the Salafi Dawa, um, came by virtue of MSA Halakas, uh, brothers only, but yeah. <laughs> MSA Halakas that Yasser would do, yeah, uh, at the you know in the basement of the university center. Uh, because that's where Yasser worked a part-time job and, you know, he could be on duty as it were. Um, and at the same time, you know, we would have this halakha setting. Um, and I'll even say this. And again, uh, you know, I, I remember after like a year or two years of like, you know, constant weekly uh, halakot, um, you know, we had an exam. Yasser gave us a, you know, Yasser gave us an exam. He was already kind of, you know, sort of fertilizing his academic, you know, academic credentials back then. Um, and uh, I, I got the highest score and uh, of the exam. And, and, the, and the prize, and I put it in air quotes, the prize was that whoever got the top two scores would be allowed, you know, you would have the imprimatur of the MSA to be able to give a khutbah. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. So that's, that's just, yeah. So, I mean, but you know, anyway, that's that was that was the MSA U of H, you know, University of Houston uh, undergrad days. Uh, I mean, prior to that, you know, you know, I you know I was really involved with MENA, and I grew up in Muslim youth groups uh, in in Houston, Texas. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I spent many many years of my life uh, fully entrenched in the Salafi, you know, in Salafi Dawa. Um, you know, I spent time in Boulder, Colorado, studying with Mashaikh, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, all of that is there. Yeah. I mean, um, the name, you you mentioned Boulder, Colorado, Salafi Dawa, that's Jamal Din Zarabozo, you know, I mean, who now I believe is in Sacramento. I haven't, yeah, I haven't crossed paths. I actually him. have met, I met him, um, during the Amja conference a couple years back and this is post Salafi, but when, yeah, it's funny because when Sheikh Yasser introduces me to like some of his colleagues now. He's like this guy back in the day. Because when I first met him, I was grueling him about like because I was a Madkali Salafi. Okay, right. So yeah. people sometimes one thing that annoys it, you have a lot of brothers is not mainly brothers who will say I used to be Salafi and then I yeah. kind of saw you know. But I don't understand what their but then their version of Salafism is very like not like I give credence to your version. I I I, I authenticate your Salafi experience. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you know? you. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. like, I think a lot of people don't. And I think yeah. no, like, just from a, from a timeline, dude, I, you know, I was Salafi pre Iana QSS, you know, right. days. Yeah. Uh, and then I lived through and was getting out of the movement by then, but I was very much part of the community and aware of the whole, Q, what went, what, what, what went down between Iana and QSS. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, yeah, the, 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 the version, if you will, or the time period of Salafism that I was introduced to was pre all of that. Man. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, for me, I was mid two thousands, Troy S pubs, that mud Kali Salafism. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Yasser Qadi, I first met him in 2005, pick him up from the airport in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm grilling him about all these like shakes. So-and-so said we shouldn't take from this person. So what do you think about that? And like, and he's like, Oh yeah. So he brings it up. So I've he introduced there, so he introduces me to Jamal Adin Zarabozo. We're eating burgers. And he's like, This guy right here, when I first met him, he picks me up on a turban and a thobe from the airport and is grilling me about like the Sheikh, you know, Sheikh, you know, I saw this recent fatwa by Sheikh Saleh Fozan. He said this. And I was like, and so Jake Jamal at at this point, they, they they've heard it all, right? They're just kind of right. like they kind of like amused by it. That's cute, you know. But uh yeah, but 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 I think go back to your original question is that we don't have like at least when we, and, th- and I'll tell you when we first started, anybody that wanted to come on the show, we let them on. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, it was pretty much like we just got volume. Like, um, you know, I, I would think of somebody. I would think like we, we have a mutual friend. He probably dressed you today, Usman Aslam. That <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, he ma- he he makes so yeah. So I would be like Usman's like interesting guy. Shout you out know? to Usman, man. Yeah. He's an artist. Yeah. Right. So I would hit him up and he had never done a podcast before, but I'm like, I didn't care. Like bring him in. 
Um, you know, there's people like, you know, Mike Slice from, you know, at the time, with, you know, he was with Tot Leaf Chicago. Yeah. You know, good friend of mine. I was like, this guy would be perfect. Bring him in. And mm-hmm. so we would just start bringing these local guys. That I, I had, what happened was I had this Rolodex of people. And sometimes there were missed. Sometimes nice. there were people that would they would bring in, and it would be. Um, you just meant you just happened to mention two people who I know personally, but we have we haven't had on the show, and now I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to feel bad. Yeah, uh, and, again, and, not by and, design. And, so right. Mike, uh, it's only a matter of time, and Osman already knows this, but it's only yeah. a matter of yeah. time. Yeah, but Mike anyway, will, sorry, and Mike's been on my show twice. Wow. Um, Sultan sneakers. Wow. So between Mad Mum Luke's and Sultan sneakers, he's been on three times. So I think it's just like. Dude, uh, Mike is it, a soldier, man. Yeah. Mike is, yeah. So yeah. that's how God that's how him. that's how we would do it, right? But then we would get feedback. So one of the things that drives us is our audience participation, um, mm. via social media, especially yeah. Twitter and now YouTube. Yeah. Um, we do almost none of that, as you okay. as you probably yeah. are aware. How yeah. so? How are you getting feedback from your audience? I guess that's a great. Yeah, we're old school. Uh, well, not snail mail old school, but email old school. So yeah, okay. people hit us up on diffuse congruence at Gmail. You know. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, didn't make, didn't mean to make a plug. It just mm-hmm. comes out. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, but we've very recently, and I want to say recently, as in I don't know, three months. You know maybe a few months. I mean, again, I've lost, con- I've lost the concept of linear time, yeah. but um, yeah, we, we, we've ventured into, into uh, Twitter, although we've always had a Facebook presence, but that Facebook page has always been kind of just like, you know, putting out our content, um, you know, uh, or, you know, but again, we don't like engage our audience via social mm. media as much as I think you guys do. Right. Uh, which is, I think something I've always, you know, uh, you know, in a very halal way, been envious of. I think you guys do a really great job of doing that. Um, I, I would love to do that, but I, like I said, at the same time, I don't know if it fits our format of the show. Um, but I mean, you know, but I, I would really love to kind of go back, Mahin, to kind of talking about something we, you know, and we almost kind of put a pin in that conversation and we didn't kind of pick it back up. But, sure. you know, we were talking about like, you know, pre, pre, like pre, uh, applying you know pre-filters and and culling the kind of guests that we have on the show and 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 what goes into that methodology and and so you are kind of stating how and by design right and and i don't want to i don't want to speak for you but by or you or or man man loose but by design has been a sunni kind of centric show Mm, yeah now but within that now obviously as you know better than i do uh or yeah that 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 even within sort of you know, American Sunnism, let's call it, you've got obviously many, many, you know, uh, branches or branches. There you go. Yeah. Furua. Yeah. So, uh, get into that maybe like, uh, within that, then within that sort of, uh, microcosm of the community, how selective are you there? I don't think we really are at that point. I, I think if someone is, so if you want to talk about like Salafism, mm-hmm. you've had, we've had people like Imam Shadid Muhammad, um, Medina graduate. Um, I think there's, you know, there's a, a other local Shiyuk who've come on. There's his brother Abu Mujahid, who was a Jin exorcist. Um, a lot, mo- most of my colleagues, I think, have like, the, you know, the a lot of the teachers in Chicago um, have these have self. If you're not Dio Bundy, you kind of have like self inclinations in a way. So it it was a that was a natural fit. Mm. Um, you know, so and then on on the you know on the traditional side, you've had the like, doctor. I think Doctor Shadi Al Masri is the one, and I think he's the one that opened up a lot of the eyes for for my co. Like Sim openly admits that that he had a pretty um, twisted view of what Tasawuf and Sufism was until we got Doctor Shadi on, and then he mm-hmm. kind of saw like a different yeah. angle. Right. Um, you know, obviously we the Zaytuna crowd. We've had Sheikh Abdullah Hamid Ali, Doctor Ali Atai. Um, Al Maghrib, we've had Yasser Qadi, Imam Suhaib Web, um, Dalia Mogahed twice now. So I, nice. I, I think within Sunniism, it's been pretty broad. We've even pushed the envelope. People who are even on a more liberal end, like um, Dr. Had- Sadi Sadia Yakub, um, she was on the uh, Fitna episode because she was one of the uh, feminist in Islamic troublemakers of North America. That's a group. Um, That's like a real it's, legit it's, group. It's, oh, it's a sorry. Facebook group. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Okay. The okay. Facebook group. But like, it, you know, that was more of a contentious show, to be honest. But again, um, you know, I, I don't think I, I think for us, the bottom line is now we will we we, we willing to engage anybody if they want to come on the show. Okay. But the guest has to be um, 
it has to be interesting as well. Mm-hmm. Because some mm-hmm. people, like, I'm not afraid to say it. Um, I don't tell people to their face because it, it, it's just, it's hard for me to be a jerk like that. I, I will try to make something up. Um, but if if I viewed their content and they look to be very boring, or if Stim, he's the ultimate at the end of the day, he's got the creative control as the producer, okay. um, determines to be, and he and, and he's a, he's, his tolerance for boringness is tighter than mine. So I might let someone through, but then he won't kind mm-hmm. of thing. So then I would kind of invite, you know, um, his perception and his, and his perception may be flawed, but it is what it is. And he's the boss. Um, if he thinks they're, they're not going to be, they're going to be boring or not entertaining. Um, then he, he, he won't, he, he, he won't let it on. Right. Right. Nice. Would you have someone on who like for them, their Muslim identity or, you know, like is like, yeah, isn't there, isn't the, isn't central to who they are. So like, you, like you mentioned Asif Manvi, the episode with Asif Manvi, yeah. now he might, he might be filtered out just by virtue of the fact that I don't think he identifies as a Sunni Muslim, let alone. Yeah. Well, I'll just leave it at that. Right. But he certainly doesn't identify himself as a Sunni Muslim. He's not, he's like a Bora Muslim or something. Right. So he would probably be filtered out all, but as an archetype, as like, again, just would you have someone who happens to be an artist or a musician or a, um, you know, comic book editor, right? We've had someone who was a senior editor at Marvel Studio. Uh, I'm sorry, Marvel Comics. Um, so their Islam, and again, I don't want to cast dispersions. Um, you know, we didn't have them on because their Islam is their, is central to their identity. Mm-hmm. We had them on because they were chief editor of Marvel Comics. Um, so someone like that, for example, would you, yeah. would that be content you'd have we have or, had that we we've okay. had it um we had because my co-hosts are mma they love mma so there was a local mma fighter there you go that's it we actually, we actually had two mma the first mma fighter we had on like ricardo lamas from like 2016 he's not even muslim um okay yeah so that that's just the guys are just in the mma they brought on the mma guy and they talked about uh whatever they talked about um the recent guy was a guy from like uzbekistan who like i think is not really practicing to be honest, that's what we heard behind the scenes. But so, if you don't mind, yeah, like let's MMA style this. Like let's like wrestle with this idea. Then, Muslim. I mean, non-Muslim. Okay, because you're there to talk about a topic, but not like she. Like I'm just curious. Not she because um, I think that people have a um, like like a she, for example. Probably because I think people then. I think it's easy for people to distinguish between non-Muslim and Muslim, right? Okay. Clear. But yeah, like, fair enough. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Like you're like, I really enjoyed your David Coolidge episode. I, I publicly admits that I, it was, oh, like, I, and, and I, I Facebook that posted it, right? Yeah, no, that was a really, I really enjoyed the show. A lot of people I talked to, they were like, no, but it clouds the thing. But I'm like, to me, I'm like, to me, I'm not thinking about being Shia now because of David Coolidge. I just thought he was, I just thought that he was raw and it was emotional. And it, it was it, that I, I could, I, I, I like, I like the story. That's what, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I, no, I, that's I, a really interesting point because I mean, you know, for, because if that qualifies as fluffy, like, you know I mean? Like let's take like, uh, the David Coolidge episode, you know, if, if that's emblematic of us being fluffy, then I, I'll, I'll take that, you know, I'll, I'll yeah. take that as a, as a, as a, as kind of a, as a badge, because for me, I mean, to, you know, I'm sorry, you know, we, we're going to give people a space to talk about their life journey. Um, and so, um, you know, I, and I'm okay with that. Um, and, uh, and I, and I'm just, so far, I've only been listening to you and kind of putting you on the spot in terms of, you know, what would be kind of an automatic, um, mm. you know, automatic, uh, preclude, you know, would automatically preclude someone from the show, mm. you know, for us, I'll be honest, like, this is something that I remember Zucky and I, cause I now, and, I, and I'm just drawing attention to this because I, I distinctly remember this conversation like, Oh, because so-and-so Imam was in the news who was an openly homosexual Imam. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Hey, curious Zucky, like, cause we, we hadn't, we hadn't really talked about it. It was like, hey, like, would you would you be comfortable having like an open, openly gay, you know, imam on the show? And that was kind of like an early for us. It was like, no, we wouldn't, you know. And so we just we just wouldn't. And so for me, you know, for us, it was like like that's definitely one um, that, that 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 I, I I can go on record and say like is is a is a is by design and by choice. Um, like we would never do that. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so I'm just curious. Yeah, it's interesting well, what to kind of hear the, your what methods. What would be the thought process behind that, though? Like, what is your... Good point. Exactly. <laughs> because, like, people could point out, like, I, I mean, to me, okay. so I, I am the most... Li- out of my co-hosts, okay. I'm the most liberal. Like, the idea of not giving anybody a platform to me, like, I, I, I can't even wrap my head around that concept. Got it. So, to me, the only reason... There's only two people in the world today that I can think of that I would not give a platform, not Muslim or no slip. Got uh, it. Probably David Wood, that Christian like polemic dude. I don't know if you know him or not. I don't. He, he just makes up stuff about Islam and like has a YouTube channel, like stuff like that. And, okay. and, and then um, it's open. Like I, I, I don't, you know, uh, Daniel Hookie could you. Um, Again. Someone who I see. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, because I don't believe there to be intellectual honesty there. Mm, I, mm, and it's a good point if you push and to me that's like if that becomes obvious like you're just doing something to get likes like you don't have to be and it's my it's my judgment call i can't i can't prove it to you at the end of the day it's my show i can say you know this right. is what i want to do i just am not gonna go there right right um and based upon my personal knowledge and experience and you know how i view the situation um so, so, so to me, I, I would say I'm pretty liberal. Like I had a, tra- I had a transgender Hafiz on my Salt of the Sneakers podcast, right? Really? Oh, you wow. know? And so now Muhammad Hijab gets to have a transgender person and people, I'm like, wait, I was first, <laughs> you know, like what so the wait, heck? Muhammad Hijab had a guest who was a transgendered Muslim. Transgender Hijabi, a wow. trans female. I think she's biologic. I assume biologically male who's now trans female. Okay. Um, so, so for, yeah. yeah. So to answer your question about like, you know, kind of, well, what is my reasoning for why I would draw the line there is, is to me, it's less about my own personal reasons for it or my own personal, um, why I find it say reprehensible or problematic, or I have an aversion to it, you know, uh, is it's more about, I don't think it fits the contours of the show. And by that, I mean, that if I was to have an, an openly gay imam on the show, I wouldn't have that person on but for or but to discuss their homosexuality. Like, unless, I mean, I don't know, like, I, I can't think of an instant. Like, I'm just giving you that particular case. But like, you know, so so by virtue of that kind of analysis, like, I wouldn't have you on for any other purpose than to talk about how you... And I don't mean, obviously, you, not you, yeah. but how you, Mr. Imam, or, you know, Ms. Imam, happen to, uh, how do you jive Islam with your sexuality? Mm-hmm. So for me, if I'm not going to have that conversation, um, because I don't want, I just don't, I don't find that particularly an interesting conversation, at least, yeah. or right. put it this way, I'm not saying it's not interesting. I, I'm not, I'm not interested in engaging that conversation. Let's put it that way. Sure. So for me, that's the creative control. Like it's just based on what I think to be an interesting conversation. Now tomorrow, you know, I would imagine a scenario where you have like 10 people or 20 people who write in, write into us, maybe even people who listen to me right here, right now and say, Hey, Pervez, like, you know, we think it'd be really interesting for you to engage in a conversation uh, about homosexuality and Islam and, and, and bring someone who identifies themselves that that way um then maybe i would consider it only but but having done my homework and having Mm. kind of really then uh uh made it very clear kind of the opposite for those who've heard the episode with our with our shia uh imam we made it was the opposite approach which was we told it was very made it was made very clear both off mic as well as we made it clear on mic that we were not going to be engaged in polemics like Mm -hmm. that wasn't the purpose of the show the purpose of the show is really just to, you know, allow a Shia imam to present their side of, of, of Muslim history, let's say, right? Um, and then we did our own kind of soft refutation, if you will, and that was by having, you know, Dr. Ali Atai on to kind of then yeah. counter some of the points that we had on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or some of the points that were raised, um, you know, by the Shia imam. Um, so anyway... The opposite approach would be taken then with regards to having someone who, as I said, would be like, say, openly gay or openly, mm-hmm. LG, you know, what was transgender right. would be that it would be, see, I, I would lay the parameters of the show as being a debate, as being kind of a polemic against that lifestyle or okay. against that, uh, against, um, you know, 
uh, the the understanding that 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 you can negotiate Islam and your uh, and your homosexuality. Okay, that makes, and I th- I think the reality is that the the Shias have been around. They're not. They've been around as you know forever right right and we have always even within the sunni tradition we understand that we assume they're islam by default mm. right um mm. uh, so if that if we if we can say that they're around they've been around forever they're a small person they're like we are the majority but they're they're around and we know they're muslim by default um, unless they unless you know there's you can get a whole deal about well do they hold certain 12 or beliefs about x y and z and does this you know ex- you know what i'm saying yeah but i think there's like I was like, I think it's a point of like, it's it's still a point to understand. Like, we should probably at least know who they are, yeah. rather than like, like, ref- like using a polemical argument where we're kind of phrasing it that way. And, and I, I think that's where let them at least speak on their behalf, right? Yeah, yeah, right. They're not going anywhere. Whereas with, um, I, I think the LGBTQ thing, I think it becomes like because there's so much more now with it right. as far as like culture wars and impact in like if you just you know it, it, yeah it, it's, it's just very like, very topical it's a yeah. it's it's a real hot topic it's a real hot button issue um yeah i mean both within the muslim community and without you know and, and without yeah um you know what's interesting like i think one other thing that led to our getting on on mics here um yeah. was uh oh yeah we were talking about this idea of yeah like again this kind of talking about where we draw the line, what would preclude someone from being invited to our shows or our, ver- our, 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 uh, uh, platforms. And I've wrestled with this, which is, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll give two examples. One mm-hmm. example is we've had guests on the show who were invited to talk about, I, in some cases, either their own kind of origin story uh, but also maybe talk about their writing or their ideas on politics or, you know, yeah, what have you, but who have, who, who have very problematic associations mm. when it comes to the, um, MLI, um, MLI, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Muslim leadership initiative. Mm-hmm. So we've never had them on the show to argue or to, or to even comment on why they are okay with being part of the MLI a crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've, so I wrestle with that because I don't know if that's being intellectually honest. I don't know if that's being, I don't know if that's being, or, or that's of a disservice to our audience mm-hmm. by not asking those questions. Mm-hmm. So I love your thoughts on that. I mean, cause you know, you probably know exactly who I'm talking about, yeah, you know? Right. Right. Um, so how do you, like, what do you think about that? I and mean, again, be, please be candid. Like you're not going to hurt my feelings. Y- y- like I, I'll, I am not the. In general, my take is always engagement is better than no engagement. There you okay. Go. Um. Right. So first and foremost, so like fundamentally, I don't have a problem personally with people talking to Zionists. I think the problem came about is, um, how it became like a vacation and it was framed a certain <laughs> way, etc. You know, I was like, listen, you talk to Zionists, just meet them at your church in Chicago or San Francisco or whatever, right? Or wherever big city you live in, New York. You know, why do you got to go into big, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like when I engage, like I talk to these Pentecostal Christians that they say Islam is evil. I engage them, but it's like on, like, it's, there's, I'm I'm not getting a perk, you know what I'm saying? And so there's like this kind of like, there's all this other stuff that could possibly go on with the, with the trip, et cetera, where um, you're framing something a different way with, you know. So, I, so number one, I'm for, so, um, I don't have, but I, it's not like MLI for me is not like everyone has like certain things they go, that they are really passionate about. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, someone who I, who I would like to get on my show at some point, maybe you guys can, Sana Saeed, a journalist, for, I mean, she's the one that really brought the MLI thing to light. Right. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that's the, you know, for me it was her and, and, and Jack. Yeah, right. Uh, sorry, Jonathan Brown, John, Professor Jonathan, Jonathan Brown. Brown. I, yeah. I, I know. yeah, right. So I think that's where. Um, so they're obviously very passionate about it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and they're knowledgeable about every little angle about it. I I don't have like so to me. First of all, it's like unless I really dig in and find out the information, I'm not going to have a position on a lot of things. And, and I think number one is that like people seem to think it's 
you have to have a position on stuff. I know, you know, yeah. and so I, I um, trust what Sana and Dr. Jonathan Brown, the, the work they did and on a surface level and based upon some of the other things I've seen with those individuals and um, people like Professor Omar Mazuffer, who's a good friend of mine in Chicago and kind of stuff he shared with me. Um, my, 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 I'm making tuck lead that they're right on MLI. Got okay. it. Yeah. Now, how mad would the mad Memlooks probably bring them on? Probably not, because on that issue, they are because understand this that my producers are my produce him, you know, because his background, m- my background, because of like Salafism and that traditional Sufism, I'm like an, I'm a stickler on like Akida. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like theologically, they have to be, and I'm pretty broad as far as Sunnism goes. I believe that Salafia is still within Ahl Sunnah mm-hmm. as is traditional Islam, Madhabs, you know, that kind of thing, you know, sure. Madhab, no Madhab, right? When it comes to things like like Ahmadiyya or Qadiyya, you know, Ahmadiyya, no way. Yeah. Like, don't eat, like, I, like, I would not even think twice about not um, having them on or not right. giving them a platform. Exactly. Or, or someone who's like an op- uh, openly murtad. Uh, yeah, right, right? well, it, unless it was known to be a polemic thing, right? Gotcha. Like, like okay. that kind of framework, like a back mm. and forth, and yeah. that wouldn't be me. I would, I would, we would put Mort on him because he's he's our bulldog, and we let him loose. Uh, uh-huh. But I think that's kind of. But Sim being a, his, he's from his, but he used to, he kind of came to being through his but career. He's very open about it. That's very politically motivated. Yeah. Um, MLI, CVE, these things, like, eh, no way. Gotcha. <laughs> So he's so, so anyone who but see this is where right it becomes kind of an issue or like again where I wrestle with it is is well I'm not going to have this person who may be accused of having ties to CLE or having problematic stances on CLE uh, CVE sorry CVE, CVE so I'm, or I'm, I'm combining right. yeah I'm yeah, combining yeah. and, on, and okay. I'm also as a lawyer you know CLE is like continuing legal education sorry. okay sure <laughs> yeah. but anyway so yeah CVE as well as um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, sorry MLI yeah uh, I kind of lost my train of thought here sorry uh, anyway it will probably come back to me yeah but I was saying that like because he's the so we all so I think what happens is collectively we have our things and we kind of, it kind of comes together. Right. Um, basically it's like, you know, we, we probably wouldn't have a Shia on now because Mort is part of Sunni defense. Now he wouldn't okay. object to it, to be honest. He might okay. want to have him do on, do a back and forth. That's his style. Yeah. But he would that, but for us, we would be like, what's the, what's the point kind of thing. Gotcha. Like it doesn't, I guess it doesn't interest us enough either. Okay. Right? So let me, and this is, now I just remember what, what I was going to mention, what, what I was yeah. going to say, which is, we're also dealing with this climate of cancel culture, right? Cancel yeah. culture. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how much credence do you give to, you know, a guilt by association kind of hit job piece or, you know, uh, you know, online content, you know, uh, social media posts that a person makes, um, you know, against an organization or an individual without having, you know, done the proper research. So I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, yeah, without naming I- names. Yeah, I, 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 I'm affiliated with an organization. I remain affiliated with an organization that has uh, been um, been uh, mentioned uh, as part of this, like of, of you know, accepting or having CVE ties or accepting CVE money, right? Right. So now, if someone's not going to have me on their show or have someone from that organization on the show because uh, that organization uh, has, I'll say, wrongly been linked to CVE monies. Uh, then, 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 you know, where, where do you end? Like, cause we, we at the same time decry how we live in this cancel culture and how problematic it is. Yet we're kind of being informed by that same kind of culture by how we are filtering guests. Do you see what I'm saying? Sure. So v- 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 very simple. Okay. Um, so I think that like your organization will be, what would, there will be no issue with them having Coming on Mad Mamluks. Okay. Okay. I we, we don't. It has to for us. It's got to be clear cut, direct. Like like got the guests it. maybe you had on were ML. They were an MLI cohorts, and they did not. So we had maybe someone who was an MLI cohort, but then he made a public statement against it. There right. So we're yeah. like, all right, off the hook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, if yeah. someone is known to do like to be a CVE recipient themselves directly, and is very open up, and it's and it's it's clear cut open not an allegate you know 
Yeah. That, that would be the thing where I always joke on the show. I'm like, listen, man, like, is it that bad? Like, we all got to get paid. Like, I mean, we live in America. Like, we're yeah. all kind of sellouts already. So what's the big deal? <laughs> right? No, because I'll, I'll give you an example, you know. And, and, no, I, I totally hear you. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the people, and I know him personally, he's a lawyer, um, and he's written extensively about, you know, uh, Muslim organizations and CLE money. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I think you've even had him on Man, Man, Matt Matt Yeah, but, we've had him on a few times. Okay, okay. So <laughs> he, I, he's our guy. I'm reticent to mention names, but yeah. if you want to mention names, I'm not going to stop you. But for example, he has he has included in his uh, uh, people that have come under his crosshairs. Right. Uh, he has included an individual who I consider to be not only a personal teacher of mine, yeah. but also someone who is a, one of the greatest thought leaders like that that are, that that we have in our Muslim community. Um, so it's like, what am I going to cancel that person and never have him on the show? So, like for example, how would you? Like if given the opportunity and you, I think, I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Most probably most in our audience do, but would you have this person on the guest, uh, sorry, on the show as a guest, even though he's been in the crosshairs of someone else on your show who's already, who's written extensively on CVE. Absolutely. He, he, he would be, he, he, I I did it again. Yeah. It was no, sorry. CVE. That's right. CVE. I, I, I I don't, I don't think that, I I don't think there'd even be a question. I think we'd be thrilled to have him. Yeah. Got it. You know, but not just because of the of the of the name of the cachet of the name. Well, it's 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 because like, again, it's like I think I think we have a friend. I think we have we would also think that like, listen, if it's it's an allegation, like it it went both ways. Like, let's let's not like hide the elephant in the room. Mad Mum looks to get some pushback this past week because we had no Man Ali Khan. (laughs) Right. I mean, we did. You know, I mean, it's like. So I, I I I think it goes both ways. I, I don't okay. think that you know, I, and I think my co-host would agree with me that mm. if mm. these you know, it's got if, if if you know if there's an actual trail and it's very open, it's very evident. That's one thing. But if it's someone else, even on our show, he's saying this, and it's like, and we're like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he said it. We love we, we love we love our we love our guests. We appreciate when people come on our show and we hear them out, right? But it doesn't mean that. They're going to inform because, like, if if they informed our thoughts, we've had over two hundred episodes. It would we we're, we're like schizophrenics at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, you know. And I, like, and then the other. Remember, I, I said I was going to give like I wanted to talk about two things, like yeah, automatic filters, as it were, automatic right. you know precluders, um, right? To, uh, uh, automatic preclusion from the show, right? We we, we could we kind of talk through um, MLI. To me, the other one would be you know people guilty of and. and you like you said the elf <laughs> in the room people who've been guilty of or, or let's say accused of sorry. right we don't know guilt people who've been accused of moral turpitude or sexual improprieties would we have them on the show so i'll give you an example and i don't want the rumor mill to start and I, and, and, and and you know you know seek refuge in allah yeah. don't don't think of names as i'm or don't think of people as i say this story or this right. where i mention this anecdote so yeah Please, audience, um, d- don't do that. Uh, and I'm never going to go on the record as saying who I'm referring to. But mm-hmm. for example, we we had the opportunity to speak with, um, you know, a relatively well known um, personality. Uh, certainly, if I mentioned his name, you would know who that person was. Uh, and then it was brought to our attention that this person um, uh, has not so publicly been accused of certain. Uh, sexual indiscretions, um, moral turpitude. Okay, sure. We decided we made the editorial decision, um, or actually, I did, and then later told Zucky about it. But but I made the editorial decision to uh, basically make up an excuse and got ourselves out of the um, out of the interview. Um, rather than you guys did not do the interview. Correct. Okay. Correct. So so that to me is kind of another automatic precluder like preclusion for me like if someone if it's brought to our attention that someone is accused not get, like i said guilt we don't know but even accused of um you know sexual improprieties or uh or uh, you know like i said fancier word moral turpitude um i wouldn't have that person on the show now going back to your elephant in the room mm-hmm. how do you navigate that or how did we? I'll, t- I'll tell you. Oh, there you go. Sorry. How did we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did. By the way, I, I've heard. I've heard the show. Yeah. 
I was, I was, I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't resist that one. I think, it was, <laughs> I think it clocked at over two hours, but I, but I, but I, yeah, but I, yeah um, I waited, I waited through it. So I mean, like I think so. We we were we we had to go back. So we had I, you know we 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 had this on a live stream last night. We had like you know people call in and kind of talk up talk about it because so um, after the show. Yeah. We, we, oh, we, so we 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 did that show uh this past Saturday. Like yeah. this show when it released will be a few weeks out, but you know pre like we sure. did, we did the show with Noman on Saturday and then did the live stream kind of our weekly Wednesday roundtable we call it on Wednesday night. Um, and Where you take like listener calls or whatever. Or it's live. They'll live, do, yeah. They yeah, do live right. chats and then people can call. We have a, <laughs> we're just trying this thing out where they can call in. Oh, so, okay, cool. Yeah. Listener calls. Sound, it's, I'm, I'm probably sounding like a dinosaur that I we, am. We, so. uh, we encourage. Like, Yo, dude, you've heard of like, you know, people can like, yeah. Yeah. Like, and, DM and, you and, and, and we, we encouraged um, someone who like, yeah. Uh, one of the challenge, the idea of, of giving them the platform, right? Okay. Okay. Um, great. So that, 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 so we did that. So I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you like my, my own version sure. of the story, right? Sure. From, so when this all happened, this is 2017. Um, we had heard about it um, from some of the circles of imams who I trust, right? Um, you know, I think around Isna time, we, you were hearing it going on. It's sort of, it's the back of the time it was in July, I think back then. Um, I want to say, and you know, you're hearing about it. And as I said on our show with Professor Omar Mazafar, that um, I had no reason to not believe the accus, whatever. But at the same time, there was so much like there was a huge spread of what it could be, mm -hmm. right? And then you were you would hear things. Oh, it's not zina. It's not illegal sexual intercourse. Yeah. It's yeah. not rape. Mm -hmm. But it's some kind of abuse, spiritual abuse. So then you're like, sure. what could it be? Like something that's unbecoming of someone of that there status, right? And I want to say, just for the record again, the person, the the uh, anecdote that I gave, very yeah. much the same kind of situation. It wasn't, right. yeah. it, it was not uh, sexual abuse, mm. uh, but it was perhaps an abuse of his, of his authority, right. this person's yeah. authority. Right. Uh, and certainly something that we expect better. Yeah. from our scholars and our thought leaders. Let's put yeah. it that right? So I want to be very clear. This was definitely not, you know, even the accusations were not to the level of like what happened in Elgin a few years ago. Sure, sure. Right, right. So I think that's where, um, so remember when that happened, we started like speculating because we were like, okay, it's not that, it's not that. And so even <laughs> our code, right. well, yeah. it's so can't be that bad, but it's still abuse. And now it's like, and then there's other things going on. You know, what's going on in our head? We're, at, we're, we're trying to talk to people in, we're not, at the end of the day, I don't think we're entitled to information. Like, let's make it clear. Yeah. I don't think we are. If people, people told us stuff, they told us stuff, but that's a, it, it just added more confusion. I think it just raised more questions. Um, and to me, it wasn't like, so I remember back then you were thinking about, okay, this is in Dallas. This is like it happened in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Certainly the people, to me, logically, I'm like, certainly the people who are in Dallas are going to have a better understanding of what's happening than what's in Chicago, okay. right? Fair so enough. I gave them the credibility. I was like, listen, if, if you guys are saying something's going down, it's going down. Um, and we, and, but like as a platform, I think we did not take a stand either way. Mm -hmm. I felt like, um, we did some bad. We did some dumb. We we brought like there was a show that was done with Daniel Hakikachu to speculate on some stuff, and that was like pointless because you've got somebody who's like you know gonna pontificate who has no information, yeah. and is just talking about it in theory, like why you know we should be hiding the sins, you know whatever, right? Mm. Um, and I set that show out purposely. I mean, I was like, that's the, that that just doesn't sound like a good idea at all. So and, I agree, so I, yeah. I personally just. Uh, did not go on that show, but right. you know, the, at the end of the day, the, the guys want to have the, they have it right. Um, I still had to deal with the pushback because people were hitting me up like Mad Mom looks did this. I'm like, yo, bro, I was on the show. What are you asking me for? <laughs> you know, that yeah. doesn't really work. By the way, I, I realized because you get associated with the platform no matter Absolutely. what. Absolutely. Um, and then we had Professor Omar Mazafar on, and he could say as much as he could, but of course, little legal things we couldn't, right? 
Yeah. I think at the end of the day, we were kind of like, and I think, I just, yeah. And we had, you know, Dr. we had Omar on the show, yeah. um, like just weeks after that story broke as well. Sure. And we had already had Dr. Inger Matson on the show, not to talk about that, mm. but I know later, you know, yeah, obviously yeah. she was involved in that, but she, when she was on the show, she did talk about this idea of spiritual abuse. Mm. And then I think we followed it up months later, albeit, but we followed it up with a conversation with one of the founders of, uh, in Sheikh's clothing. Yeah. Right. Mm, right. So I, I I think for us as at the end of the day, um, it's been, it was, it's been a few, few years passed by the way it like we, um, I think one of my co-hosts, um, had, you know, uh, you know, watched one of his videos recently and, and we, we talked about a round table, long story short, I think he got, he was, he was able to get in touch with us and we were like, you know what, we're talking about Quran and Arabic. We're kind of like, mm. and the thing is, what, what I had seen is that he was back on the scene, like doing like paid events in America. Like he sold out in Cincinnati, Ohio, like a year ago. Nobody does that. 600 people sold out. Like nobody goes to Ohio. Nobody in Ohio like goes to lectures. <laughs> right. And so we're seeing this and I'm not seeing like an uproar kind of thing. You know, you're not seeing it. So you're seeing this vibe here and there. So then we're like, you know, in my head, like, you know what, you know, I personally, my belief is that like, hey, listen, if the imams who I trust have a position, right, but maybe I'm interpreting, maybe my conclusion is different. But I'm also talking to other imams, too, who didn't uh -huh. sign off. And I'm, I'm hearing that, like, oh, not everybody's on the same page here because some of them are like, no, this is like he shouldn't have been doxxed. Right. People are. But, but they won't go public and say it because, you know. And and I think partially I, I I have to say that like I almost think there's a culture where because of the, the I feel like if this under like believe all women, um, if they came to you if you're a scholar if you're an imam and and, and some sister came to you with some kind of allegation, and you investigated it and your conclusion and you told her like I don't agree with this this is like not like I couldn't see that going over too well either. And I factor that yeah. in my, we, so we kind of thought about it. And right. so we did it. Um, and so I would say the overwhelming response has been positive. Um, and again, these are from our listeners. And all, all on top of that, I was talking to some, some sh like students of knowledge before the show who didn't agree with us doing it, but they're, you know, they told me, they were like, you know what, you guys, are, you're doing it. But there was somebody else who has a bigger platform who, brought so-and-so on some other guy who did whose his case is much worse so i mean it's not as whatever you're doing it's not as bad as that and like there's no pushback there, there you don't see a lot of that wow like, so yeah. my conclusion in all of this is that i actually think it's like the mad mamluks has like we have we're kind of a polarizing platform we have loyalists but then we have people that hate our guts <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, I want to say we're lucky enough where, you know, we haven't engendered that kind of passionate response, you know, yeah. in the, in the opposite direction, at least, yeah. uh, people, you know, yeah. I mean, alhamdulillah, like, yeah, I'm not going right. to complain about, I'm not going to complain yeah. about that, but, um, um that I might I change after the, they hear me on this show. No, I'm joking. I, I hope, I hope I answered the question, but that's kind of the thought <laughs> you process, you, you know? Yeah. And, and, and to me, another cognate of that is, or a cognate of the conversation we're having is, what about guests you've had on the pat in the past? And I think you you mentioned one of them in particular who, at the time when you had that person on the show, he was like free from you know controversy, but now he's like knee deep in it, right? He you know as being a prop provocateur and so on. Mm. But like at the time when you had him, he wasn't he didn't have that kind of reputation. He hadn't been kind of um, you know um, called out for his very problematic uh, you know uh, you know being a sort of provocateur in our. So just if I can be clear, like with diffuse congruence, you know, we've had people on the show who have later, right, yeah. been either publicly been accused or it has been brought to our attention uh, by privately that a person, you know, engaged in very much the same kind of behavior that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. you know, moral turpitude, sexual improprieties. What do you do then? Mm -hmm. So I've decided, I mean, again, this is just me making the editorial choice uh, to leave that content up there. So I'm not going to, you know, 
post facto like dox this person or remove them from our platform or right. put a you know a la disney plus or something you know like with bambi or whatever like i'm not going to put a disclaimer on that episode and say okay you know this person has now been accused of you know so and so so but again that's just a, that's that's a personal decision editorial de- choice or decision so how would you or maybe how have you yeah negotiated that kind of thing right um, so, so I, I think that, um, Sim is, uh, what do I call it? He's, 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 he's got creative control, right? Okay. Um, those episodes are going to stay up I, and I okay. agree with the decision to, to leave it up. I, I don't okay. think the, there, there's that one helps epi- me kind of validate my yeah. own kind of way of thinking. So. There's, there's one episode that, um, like we had up that we took it down later just because it was so boring. <laughs> It like if we, we were worried about people driving and like listening to it and maybe falling asleep, so we just took it down. And we're like, we just like, on, we this is a public hazard because people are going to be driving <laughs> on the road and they're going to fall asleep, and we're going to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and this was an early episode. This because yeah. I remember I, I, I wasn't on the show, I wasn't a host, and I heard this show, and I'm listening to this show, <laughs> and I'm like, this show sucks. I call us, so I'm like, what would you like, what, what's going on? Like, this guy, like, I mean. Like, yeah. You know, so I mean, and we we've done a lot of well, we've recorded and then didn't air it because it didn't yeah. go well, right? Um, we've had that too. I so thoughts, I'm gonna, yeah, I have thoughts on that, but like this was a show we aired because it was funny because um, sorry, did you say you had some technical like was it it didn't record properly? So that, sorry, that's what I heard. I mean, sometimes we use that we have to use that excuse because we don't want to <laughs> you don't want hurt their feelings. But oh yeah, one time oh, you're saying that the content was just so boring. Or, like, or yeah, like I remember one time we we had a guy running for like a local po- political office. Yeah, and we met him locally, and he seemed was cool and like down to earth, you know. And we're like, all right, yeah. he'd, be, he'd be like, you know, we got a good vibe from him. He comes in studio, yeah. and it's like he brought his PR guy with him, and every two minutes, every time we ask him a question, he's gonna look back and like. Uh, oh, yeah. was, you know, and I'm like, yeah. this is like, it, it was the only time in my life I've done a show with Mort, and he was like, we look at each other, we have nothing to say. We're kind of like, uh, I guess that's it, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, like we I just, and that's saying. like, we all had like Ijma immediately. The guy walks <laughs> out, and yeah, we're like, that was the worst episode ever. We need to do yeah. another recording now to like just wash ourselves of it. <laughs> um, I but, like cleanser. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, no. But I, I don't know that, like we've never had that happen. I mean, yeah. we've had technical problems where we, yeah. we we had to not air, or we were we've been unable to mm. to air content. Yeah, because the recording was so bad, or people, you know, yes, things like that. Okay, um, I can't think of an instance where you know it was based on, <laughs> uh, like I said, either the content being. Although as a listener, I'll I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I've listened to past uh, episodes of ours yeah. and cringed either at the quantity or certainly with regards to the quality of the show, right. but also I've cringed because the guest was just not very engaging at yeah, all. Right. At all. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, so, but, but I think going back to your original question, like I, I don't think we would post dox somebody. Um, yeah. Right. I, I don't think even as someone, because you know, it, it, it's part of the, to me, it's part of the journey, man. It's like, I, like the idea is like you're documenting, 2016 and not 2020 of Mad Bum Luke's. We have, two, you know, it's like people get a great and people can see it. Pe- people can see, and I think people can go back and listen to an old show with a guest that maybe someone we wouldn't bring on today. Yeah, and see the tr- see trends, see how trends are happening. Right there, you go. I you think it, you're right. It's like a historical record almost. Mm, right. Yeah, it becomes like a historical record. I agree with you. Although yeah. you know, we both acknowledge that we live in a climate though where you know people can get doxxed and canceled for you know tweets that they made 10 years ago right 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 and, and so it's like you know we always have that kind of um uh you know we're always on the chopping block as it were like tomorrow you know someone a past guest of yours is going to get accused of something or he, let's see even proven it is proven mm-hmm. that they were guilty of something yeah and you as a, as a content provider decide to leave that up there mm. uh you know people are going to come after you man and yeah. or people are going to come after us so it's like we 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 have to yeah we, we uh we take that. We take ownership of that. Uh, do, do, uh, possibility. Do you have, do you have any follow up questions? Because there's one. Se- I, I want to take a segue. Unless you have something else to ask, add about. about uh, this. No, I, I, I. So far, okay. I'm, I'm glad we've covered a lot of yeah. this ground. So the one thing I think we also talked about was like so how we are dealing with. Um, so Mad Mom Luke's, to be very frank, is seen as like we talked about. Like people, we're we're kind of like a polarizing podcast, right? Yeah. Um. This, and it's, it's, I mean, I'm, we're not gonna like, I guess, 
some of us we we run our mouths openly. Yeah. Um, some on social media. Um, I think I'm kind of tempered in a way. Like I temper it because I I'm still about building relationships with people who are like think different. But at the same time, I'll pop off and say something like you know, and then somebody will take a clip of it and like put it on Twitter, and boom, it goes right. Yeah. Um, but then I always try to reach out to people on the other side and see like you know, hey, this is not really what the intent was, but I yeah. You know, but um, but we bottom line is we are uh, I think labeled as being a platform of the ah right, <laughs> if I may. S- the the term uh, a, a term which, I, I didn't think we were going to go there, but okay, that's you that, know, that, 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 that's fine. I that's actually want to so, um, and it's almost I, I said last night like I, when we talk about people like why are people upset about the Mad Mum looks when I look on Twitter there's a li- these are people who don't listen who we, I don't think are listeners of our show right. Mm. But it's because they there's like a frustration that people listen to the show, right? And wait, there's all, a frustration with what? Sorry, that, that that there's a following that the Mad Mamluks is like has a following. Ah, uh, got it. And it's and it's been going for like four years plus now, two hundred episodes, and they're like this is like so we are seen as 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 a symptom of the problem of the community that mm. we're like we represent this misogynist yeah right Patriarch- patriarchy patriarchy like you know almost like some kind of semi-white supremacist you know race you know whatever proud, all these all proud these boys. like yeah probably <laughs> right. proud boys yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then so this ah right term gets thrown around and then yeah. we have it's you a know new term yeah you know, it's it's a newer term um i uh i i find the inch because i've asked even some of our former guests have come to me and kind of said yeah you guys are like alt bros or like that right um like original guests who came out in the first year or two and i'm like well what does that mean like what does that like actually like mean like what are the pillars of that right um and they were like well that's this typical alt bro response you ask for pillars i'm like well yeah if you're gonna label something something like we want to know what it is right <laughs> um but I <laughs> you've been we've... drinking too much jordan peterson kool-aid man yeah exactly yeah but but but, but i think it comes um I have some thoughts on it, but I wanted to like, you know, sure. I, I, this is kind of frankness because I think you um, would, be, I, I would assume you'd be someone of critical of the arc, right. Or the, whatever that is. But like, <laughs> I'd know. like to get your take on some yeah. of that, you know? Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't really prepared. So I, I, I hope I come across as cogent. Um, you know, I, I think anyone who follows me on social media, like Twitter, especially, um, you know, knows that I, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump's. I'm not a supporter of the administration. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, um, I have certain problems with the modern Republican Party. Um, and so, you know, it, and, and so anyway, I, I think that's that's clear. Although right. I will say, like going back to kind of just really quick or really quickly going back to what we were just talking about. You know, I would love to have a conversation with a guest on the show who is an adamantly, you know, MAGA hat wearing, you know, die in the wool conservative, you know, Republican. I would, I would welcome that. And, right. um, you know, and, 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 and where people may dismiss us or where we come across as being, oh, these guys are obviously, you know, California granola crunch and hippies, you know, tree huggers. And we are Democrats or die in the wool Democrats. Um, we've, you know, I've, I've cringed in those moments because that's not, I, I, I don't want the show to be about that. And so, for example, you know, we recently had a, had a political commentator on the show and, uh, like it, it, it became clear that this person was kind of a democratic operative as opposed to just being kind of a political commentator. And so I almost wish that, you know, we would have either had like a chaser to that episode where, if you will, like uh, barring an, uh, a expression from modern kind of parlance, yeah. like a chaser to that episode where we would have had someone on who would have been, quote unquote, a Demo- a Republican operative, you know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's all 2020 hindsight or whatever. But anyway, going into your question now, first of all, I think it's really, it, it, to me, uh, what exactly constitutes the ak right uh, or the Ahi right, or whatever you want to call it, alt bro. Um, I don't know, so I think it's still kind of TBD. Mm. Um, to me, again, the way I see it. Now, this is where I kind of okay. This is Ahi right, and this isn't Ahi right. Mm. You being, if a person is anti-liberal or mm. anti-democratic party or anti-Biden or anti-left or anti-neoliberal, whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? 
that to me isn't, and, and because again, people will often accuse me of, oh, well, you just, you want to just dismiss a person as being arc right because they happen to be anti Democrat or mm-hmm. anti, you know, Biden or anti, you know, liberal, or whatever. No, no. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's definitely not my sort of calculus with regards to what I consider to be arc right. Sure. To me, there's a, a huge gap. Um, a gulf, a you know, huge uh, d- difference between being anti all of those things I just mentioned and being straight up MAGA hat wearing, pro Trump, anti, you know, I'm sorry, COVID truther, mm. um, you know, anti lockdown dude. And so to me, like, there's like a series of check marks that you have to check mm. off before I would dismiss you as being yeah. uh, right. right. So, as I so just to restate uh, what I just said yeah. um, is that you know Trump like as in not I, I don't support Trump because he's you know anti left I support Trump because I agree with his policies I agree with him being you know him trolling the libs um, yeah. you know he, you know the the utter chaos and so on. That to me is one check. Another check is like you bought into this whole like COVID truther conspiracy theory, whatever. Yeah. You have you have bought into um, this. Um, um, you know uh, what was the other? Uh, so yeah, like like um, an- like lockdowns, mask wearing. It's 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 proto fascism, and you know Governor Whitmer is a hit is Hitler, and you know who's your mayor in Chicago? You know that dude's Hitler yeah. because you know they they have these lockdown measures. No, can you actually back is- off. The, can you back off the mic a little bit? You're actually. Oh, I'm so now. sorry. I'm you're, sorry. You, yeah, you, yeah. Got, you got rolling. So I, I got passionate. Yeah. Just sit, just um, sit back and then, and then keep ranting. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> just continue. Sorry. It was like, it was like clipping. I'm like, I don't want to edit this out. Go ahead. So I, I don't want to edit the keep. It, it's to keep ranting. Sit back and keep ranting. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. No, I, I'm getting to that point where you got to go with the Hadith, you know, where the prophet yeah. says, like, if you're having an argument, like you yeah. should sit down if you're standing and if yeah, you're yeah. sitting down, you should, you right. should lay down or make wudu. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting into that zone so i should probably just sit there yeah. <laughs> anyway or sit back anyway um anyway I, i've kind of ranted um yeah uh, th- so, so yeah so, so 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 to me i think the people who um th- there's there's someone that comes to mind when you mention that <laughs> yeah um who's been on both of our shows by the way oh yeah uh, absolutely <laughs> um but like and i would have him on in a heartbeat yeah uh, to talk about islam to talk about you right. know uh, right. his organization, all right. of that stuff. Right, Absolutely. right. But, but I, but I think that, um, I think a lot of people, uh, d- it, like what I see is, and I'm going to like, just cause I, again, on the, uh, like this is my show. So I'll, I'll just name drop a bunch of people who I think are being lumped in as the alt, right. As okay. the, as the, as the right. Right. Sure. sure. So you've got the Daniel Haki okay. You have the Ab- Sheikh Abdullah Hamid Ali. You have Dr. Shadi al Masri, Ismail Royer, Nabil Aziz. These are like the, and that's, but I'm like, but you, I look at all these people, and I'm like, okay, well, there's there's some things they agree on, but a lot of things they don't, right? Sure. And but at the end of the day, I'm like, is it? It just seems like a broad brush to like label and dismiss. I agree. You know I, what I mean? I completely agree, and I would so, never take that position. You know what I'm saying? So I think yeah. that I don't think any of those individuals that I mentioned, uh, I didn't mention the one person that you know you and I are thinking about, but <laughs> the um, I don't think any of those people. Um, would have could have voted for Donald Trump. Well, Nabil Aziz Maya, he's my boy, by the way, but he's in Dubai. If he could, he probably would have, but he's not. He can't even vote. So, but 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 he but he affiliate. But he's interesting because he his circle is a bunch of like non-Muslim MAGA people. Uh, you know, but yeah. he does dawah to them too, which right. is so. I'm like, okay, fine. You you're, you're he's doing his thing there. It's cool. I'm I'm fine with it, right? Um, but I think it comes off as a thing of like. Yeah, like Dr. Shadi, for example, has like, you know, it, yeah, it's very dismissive of like liberal positions in Islam and like, cult, you know, that kind of thing. And it's, and it's, you know, and things like critical race theory come up and, you know, people sure. will say like, yeah. hey, go read Quran and Sunnah, go read the Hadith first. Why are you guys reading like Fanon, right? Like, you know, yeah. that kind of dismissive yeah. stuff. So I think that's kind of the, you know, but it's, but it's very broad. Um, I've always felt like personally that it's, conservatives that are more willing to engage than liberals mm, because of the whole idea of platforming like you won't because people in general it's like 
because the whole idea of deep platforming, I think, is a liberal thing. It's mm. like that because it's 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 a it's a part of cancel. Like you can't like have a dialogue, right? Like I would because people might label me as an as an arc right person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that um, I I will say this though that like you you mentioned. I appreciate that podcast you had with the Democratic operative. I think I was on my show. You know, we he had him on as well. But I think um, he was. It, but I appreciated that show because it's still a uh, my it, like like people are gonna. I, I had a guy who's a chair of the Republican Party, and the, the, sh- the show was called the, the Case for Donald Trump. Mm. You know, you know, because because at the end of the day, there's a reason. Um, if we, if 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 we, I think if we want to like. I think the I think the problem we get into is that people can't handle the fact that we might say something like, "Well, is he really that bad?" Yeah, Trump is kind of crazy, but is he? If we ask the question, uh, we feel like people automatically just check out, right? Yeah, like yeah. is he That's really that point. bad? That's or a good point. you know, because I myself did not vote for either of them. I left my ballot pr- on the president blank, right? And I was called irresponsible. I got text messages saying that, like, you know this is that and you know or messages on facebook like something about my daughter's wearing red robes which i didn't get the reference until somebody explained it to me later um handmaid's tale yeah that one yeah you know kind of thing right (laughs) so like i mean there's so so to me it's just like um if people want to use the the brush and i think that's what i try to represent do i think some of the like go it it goes back to overall criticism of the podcast platform of our show at least and mamluks um, and even myself as a co-host is that like, yeah, but, I, but, I, but at the same time, I think I agree that some criticism is warranted. We're not going to, you know, you, you, you're not going to do over, you're not going to, we're at episode 212, I think right now, you're not no. going to 212 episodes yeah. and not have some screw ups. Right. right. You know, and, yeah. um, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the point I want to make. I, and that's why the only pushback I would have just to what, what you just said about like deplatforming and so on is, yeah, yeah, you're right. This is probably something you see more on the left. I think, you know, even cancel culture as a thing yeah. is probably uh, best characterized as a, as a, as a, as a progressive left um, phenomenon, mm-hmm. um, meaning the people who are the agitators of doing that. Uh, I will say though, my only pushback to that would be, like, well, yeah, you're right, but the right is great about creating just creating separate streams of 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 uh, of, of content or or separate streams of um, you know getting their getting their word out there. So, for example, right now, every you know you've got a lot of these like right wing commentators and so on that are switching over to Parler. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know. Um, you know, liberals might be doing X, Y, and Z, like you just sedated, but yeah. right, the, the right is really good about, you know, creating alternative channels to get their word out. So mm-hmm. it's like, so you've got Parler, you've got even the president right now, even Trump, like Fox, you know, he, he's not, you know, uh, things aren't going so great <laughs> in that marriage, in that yeah. marriage between Fox News and Donald Trump. So, <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, you know, um, Cheating on Fox with OAN, OAN and yeah. OAN, OANN and Newsmax, mm. so it's like you know, like so, right? I mean, you you got that phenomenon going on on the right. So yeah. now again, I know someone listening to this will probably say, "Well, Pervez, you know, Fox News is around because it's a response to MSNBC or CNN mm. or what have you." And you know, if we were if we we're having a longer conversation about media and and so called left wing bias and stuff yeah. like that in media. Uh, I would love to entertain that conversation, and maybe this isn't probably the yeah, format for that. I, I mean, but I have I, my problem. I have my qualms with that kind of even that characterization. Yeah, of the MSM being entirely liberal. Right. No. Yeah. I, and I, I I would agree. Like I, I think that I saw um, someone someone I follow on Instagram today. She was my CrossFit coach several years back, and you go, man. You doing CrossFit? No, I stopped. <laughs> it's too expensive. Um, yeah, yeah. um, I switched I over. So parlor, she's moving to parlor and, okay. um, I know she's, I saw most of her stuff and she was like, she's, you know, fits, fits the, the, those, that nerd. But I think it seems to me like, oh, they're censoring them. I don't know if that's true or not. That's the re that's the notion of it. Oh, we're moving over because these we're being censored. Oh, I agree. Right. It's like, and we can freely share articles from, right. you know, the, the New York post about Hunter Biden. Right, right. So, so I think that's what it comes down to. I think the other pushback would be that, like, well, there are, you know, 
how do we account for the actual, this comes from a point of privilege and on the backs of enslaved Africans and all, you know, that whole thing, which, um, you know, I find, I don't know. I, I, I don't like, I'm just thinking out loud here as what a counter argument would be, but yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think of a, like, so if, you know, th- that's my, that's my, that's my experience. I think that, that conservatives at least are, are willing to sure. more or less have the conversation at least, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, sure. Um, and, you know, it's funny, like, you know, for example, I know at least one of the people that you mentioned earlier yeah, um, as being, you know, as being someone who would probably be characterized as awk, right. You know, like there's an argument that, that, that can be made that he probably posts stuff uh, on social media just to get a rise or just to get a response or just to show that, you know, there's two sides to this and don't believe everything you hear from CNN. Correct. Don't, don't believe everything you hear from MSNBC. Mm-hmm. My only pushback to that is because I literally was having this conversation with someone today mm-hmm. uh, about that particular person. Mm-hmm. My only pushback on that is, uh, well, I have a few. One is I consider it irresponsible for someone who has that kind of a platform to disseminate information that is, you know, by any objective measure, pure conspiracy, pure, you know, right wing propaganda. So you're, so while you're, while you claim to be pushing the discourse or widening the discourse, what you're really doing is you're just alternating between one, what you, you know, one measure of propaganda for another measure of propaganda. Mm. So it's sure. like, uh, that's my pushback. One, well, that's, that's, that's my number one pushback. Number two, and this is in general with, not with the Oc right in general, but just a lot of, because to me, at the end of the day, all of this, a lot of this conversation, and to me, really the era of Trump, what to me, the biggest um, takeaway or uh, the most lingering, the longest lingering effect we're going to have uh, after living through the era of Donald Trump is a more of an, a, a crisis of epistemology. Like what are sources of knowledge? What are, I'm sorry, let's first identify credible sources of knowledge and then, you know, which is what epistemology is. Mm-hmm. And as a community that, that subscribes to a tradition that, uh, one of its hallmarks of our Muslim, of, of Islamic civilization, of Muslim thought, has been its uh, has been its fidelity to epistemology. Has been its commitment to uh, uh, vetting sources of knowledge. Right, the whole idea of isnad, the whole idea of uh, of of, of tawatur, mm. all of that comes from our commitment as a civilization to epistemology. Our commitment to what are verifiable. Uh, uh, sources of truth and knowledge. Yeah. And so to me, when you say, okay, that's, that's okay in the religious realm, but here I am commenting on political issues and I'm going to throw that entire methodology out the window. Mm-hmm. That I find highly problematic. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, so uh, you know what I mean? I, like, I, I, I actually agree. So I agree with you 100%. I was, so I'll give right? you this example. So, so- Okay, sorry. So the example is, I remember, like maybe a few months back, I think it was in the summer. Um, there, you know, I saw a post um, posted by one of these guys about like um, black person voting for Trump, and it's a video. Dude in the white beater, just sitting in the corner, talking about he just loves Trump. And I was talking to my friend. I'm like, we don't even know this dude's name. I love it, man. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and I so love it. I was I like, I'm like, we don't authenticate. Like, it's like, yo, like we I'll, we literally said it's not like, yo, this this is like this chain is you can't take this chain. Like, yeah, we, we, who was this guy? Exactly. I mean, part of, <laughs> part of the whole it's not methodology. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, yeah. It's, it's it's the study of narrators, dude. Like, right. Vetted people, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is probably more myth than fact, but mm-hmm. you know, there's a story attributed to Imam Bukhari, um, you know, where he traveled the great distance to uh to to uh to collect or acquire a hadith from a person, and when he approached that person, he saw him spit in the direction of the Kaaba, of the qibla. Yeah. Right. And he just turned his he turned around and walked back, right. you know, or or went back home. So because he was like and didn't even bother engaging this person. So, yeah. like I said, anyway. 
to your point, some dude mm-hmm. sitting in a wife beater uh, <laughs> pontificating. Yeah. And, it gets and on that Facebook I'm supposed to say is equal to Dr. Fauci. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, come on. Dude. Right. Or like, it, like, listen, if, if you're going to bring something like, okay, you're, you've got like Thomas Sowell, right? He's an economic, you know, oh, yeah. that, that, you know, that's okay. So people know that. Right. But I think I'll it's even like, go far as say someone like Candace Owen. Okay. Mm, yeah. Like you want to have someone like a Candace Owen on your show? Fine. Yeah, you know, right. but again, like you said, some dude in a wife beater. Yeah. Or 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 like, you know, again, now we're talking about sources. It's like, you know, Fox News just wasn't cutting it. So now I'm gonna start posting clips from Newsmax and I'm gonna start quote, you know, posting clips from O A N N and mm-hmm. uh the uh, the Alex Jones show. Yeah. Like, InfoWars. Right. Come on, bro. Like seriously. Yeah. 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 You know uh, for sure. And don't tell me that you're just being objective. Don't tell me that you're just trying to, uh, you know, allow people to see another side of it. You're not. You're mm. because you're posting information, or you're posting, um, yeah, you're posting information that directly coincides and corresponds with whatever happens to be the talking point that Trump is pushing. Mm-hmm. So it's like. If you're going to be posting articles circa June, July, maybe in May about the benefits of hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine, dude, you're not being objective. You're just parroting mm. the Donald Trump talking point. Uh, right. Because for if sure. that was the case, you'd be advocating for hydroxychloroquine right now. But you ain't. You're not doing that. Because why? Because Donald Trump ain't talking about it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and as, as we wrap up here, right, I, yeah, the, yeah, last, yeah. the last question I want to kind of get to you is – what responsibility do you think we have as podcasters for like a, either a Muslim audience or a greater audience? Um, because we get that. I get that a lot. Like even in my non-support of Joe Biden or non-support of Donald Trump, sure. people would mess me. Actually, a mutual friend of ours actually messaged me. He's like, well, you have a platform. You have a responsibility that even though I'm not posting it on my Mad Mom Luke's or Sultans and Sneakers, I may post it on my personal Facebook page. Uh, People, mm-hmm. you know, look up to you and you shouldn't, you need to be more responsible because et cetera. Um, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Cause like, I, I can't wrap my head around that to be honest. Uh, but like, I'd like to get your thoughts on it as my elder who may have more <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so could you be a little bit more specific because i'm trying to understand what exactly you're referring to okay like when so, you say, so it, it, yeah. it can be it can be a number of things right so the idea of bringing noman ali khan is, is the more recent example for mad mamluks do we have um are we being irresponsible for you know and are we going to like the, the like the, the brother who called into our show he said he's like we are sending a message that it is okay to commit, like, even if you're accused of improprieties, to um, ignore the accusations, whether you're innocent or not. And if you just wait a few years, people will just move on. Are, are like, you guys as yeah. a platform are sending this message. You have a responsibility that's better than that. Right. Um, I question myself why we even had that responsibility, but I want to kind of get your. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting, that's a really interesting question. Um, you know, and I don't know if I'm going to be, um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to offer any nuggets of wisdom here. Yeah. Um, I, I, like I feel as though, yes, I mean, we bear, I think we bear a certain level of responsibility about, um, you know, but again, where do you draw the line? I don't know. And I think that's a, like kind of an editorial decision that we all have to make for ourselves. Um, but it's like, I think we do have a certain level of responsibility just by virtue of the platform that we have and the fact that, and also the fact that this is going to remain, um, out there, uh, for posterity. And so it's like, you know, so I think that alone to me, just the, just by virtue of the fact that thousands of people are going to download any piece of any particular episode that you and I happen to put out Mm. on that and coupled with. Um, the fact that it's out there now it is out there for posterity like unless we and even if we scrub it from the internet it's going to be out there we just know that that's that's just the nature of um of the the world of technology we live in Mm. whereas you know 10 20 years ago if i gave a lecture in front of 500 people and i made a very erroneous uh statement about something related to islam you know i i would i i owed a certain responsibility to those 500 people but you know, it's, it's gone and forgotten. 
Now, you know, I'm saying something or, or I'm putting someone on the record um, or providing them a platform for thousands of people for time immemorial, right? Mm. So I think that alone uh, is something that I, I take very seriously. Um, and I, and I really, re- which is going, going, going back to what we were talking about, I think in the show mm. where I wrestle with this idea of like, okay, you know, making sure that voices are heard, people are heard, all perspectives are offered because I take that platform so seriously. So, um, yeah. So to, I, I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't know if I'm offering any nuggets of wisdom here. Yeah. I just think that, you know, just by virtue of the platform that we enjoy, just by virtue of the fact that technology is going to keep our voices and our content for the foreseeable future, you know, it, it, it immortalizes it. Then, yeah, I think that alone, um, you know, uh, you know, should give us pause and should, uh, you know, give us, um, something to reflect on in terms mm. of the seriousness with which, you know, we should proceed, um, yeah. or the kind of, um, uh, uh What's the word I'm looking? Yeah, just yeah, just the kind of yeah. We should take this very seriously. Um, so yeah, I think to your point, or to directly answer your question, I think yeah, we do have not only a responsibility. Um, I think if anything, if we're going to have like, to me, the pushback that I even gave you, uh, and again, we're just since we are naming names, like to give a platform to someone like Noman Ali Khan, who had those who are, who have who still has those outstanding accusations, has not you know, uh, either publicly, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the word like publicly, I don't know if he counted even for it even. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Public- like he, he made a Facebook post three years ago. Okay. Um, okay. that was pretty much like this. It, it was kind of like a rebuttal in a way. Right? Got it. Yeah. So exactly. Now it comes down to, uh, and we're not even talking about the fact that verifiably, right. Because we can say, okay, fine. All of that stuff that happened, you know, dms and so on we you know we may not although we've seen images we've seen content but let's say like even if we didn't have access to that what we do know for a fact is you know he made life miserable for certain people who you know who worked for him or were associated with him uh right and so it's like you know and went after them legally right so you know we know that for a fact alone so my question then or my my pushback to you, I remember when we were texting was, or my question, I don't even want to call it a pushback, was just- It was a like, question. Yeah. So like, how do we, yeah, like, are you comfortable with like giving a platform to someone without asking that even as a question, right? Yeah. So that would be something I would wrestle with. Like tomorrow, if somebody from Noman Ali Khan's crew hit us up and said, hey, Noman wants to be on Diffuse Congruence, I would say, ahlan wa sahlan. But I'm going to ask him about, you know- yeah the allegations I'm going to ask him about lawsuits that he filed against a former employee. I'm going to ask him about, you know, such and such. So, so, and, and if they turn around and say, okay, fine, he still agrees to do it. And was silent. But again, right. I don't think that's going to happen. So, so I, I, I think some of the examples you mentioned, um, they are, um, it's, it's tricky because some of it, I actually probably are not aware of some of the things you just mentioned personally. Mm. Like maybe I heard about some things, but you know, on the flip side, there's other things I know about, but like my co-hosts don't know about it and I'm mm. not privy to share that information. So mm. it's like, you're in this trick bag here and I'm like, I know. okay. Um, and some of this stuff is honestly like, oh, I heard it three years ago and I forgot. And somebody reminded me after the show. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that happened, you know, and so now it happens all the time. Yeah. We can't keep up with the latest. Yeah. Right. Even stuff you you say, because like um, one of the brothers on Twitter, he started, he posted our Omar Muzaffar like interview again. And he was like, listen to what the Mad Mumbles actually said on the show. And I was like, I said, I appreciate you sharing. I went back and listened to that. And I was like, oh, okay. It's like, I forgot what I said. And I wanted to, on, on the recap show, I made sure I communicate. I try to communicate you know, some of those points to make sure, Hey, like, mm. well, actually, yeah, I still agree with that. I think I just, it's just like, what is it's like, Oh, well, I'm not thinking about that right now. Kind of went to the, mm. you know, back of my brain. So I think that I, I think, um, the way I, 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 I appreciate your advice on the, um, responsibility because I, yeah. I think at the end of the day, um, if you slander people, if you do this, they can hold you to account on the day of judgment for it. 
See, that's the thing. Yeah. And, and, and what I say is even if those, even if allegations like again, credible allegations. I'm not talking about like you. You know, we 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 talked about yeah. you know someone saying that this person has you know uh, 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 permissive views on CL. You know, taking CVE money. Mm. Like like no, but like if if, we, if there are credible allegations being made against a person, like I have to wrestle with the fact that on the day of judgment, Allah might ask me like, why did you give this person a platform, right? Or if you did, if you gave that person a platform. Why didn't you inquire about it or, 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 or have a conversation about it or have them go on the record about it? Allah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If yeah. that, I pray that God doesn't do that, but I'm saying that I don't know. Um, but I, I will say like the antidote. So the way, and this goes back to kind of your question about my thoughts on, you know, our responsibility and so on. My antidote to a lot of what you've said, uh, or, you know, the way I've inoculated ourselves, myself, and my sh- and 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 uh, and diffuse congruence from a lot of what you've t- what you've mentioned is that we just have avoided uh, 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 thrusting ourselves into controversy. Mm-hmm. So, right. and and that is not to, you know, that's not because we're you know, reluctant or scared or, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Or we're fluffy. <laughs> it's not any of those reasons. It's because we just, I, I I feel like a lot of that stuff is ephemeral. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Like you right. said, I mean, you know, I can't even think about what happened three months ago, let alone three years ago. Yeah. But, and so it's like here today, gone tomorrow. It's like flavor of the week, controversy of the week, uproar of the week, mm, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I just, I, we have decided again, as a show to avoid any of that stuff. So for example, if your business is polemics, if your business is refutation, if that's like your shtick, yeah. you have plenty of other platforms that will welcome you, but right. you're not, you're not, diff- you're not diffuse congruence, you know, material. Yeah. Let me, I, I, so you, I, I don't know if I told you this. Um, there is one before this episode, there's one show that we've had um, that is um, the got the most pushback. Prior to this show, I think this show might be beating it, but I think from the point of like people calling me and saying that like you're spreading bottle and you might like have to be held accountable in the day of judgment for this kind of stuff. So I would uh-huh. remove the show kind of thing. Wow. Uh-huh. And it, it, it's a topic and guest you've also had on. So I'll leave it at that. But uh, <laughs> we'll talk off mic. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and by the way, he's going to be on my she's going to be on the show in a few weeks. So um it is what it is <laughs> if people like, are making like a vent like like a series of venn diagrams yeah. th- they're gonna figure out who this person is yeah just by virtue he, was, of- he was on b he was on both mad mom looks and diffuse congruence and will be on soul to the sneakers in a few weeks so you should you know, <laughs> that venn diagram is gonna shrink in about three and plus, weeks I, I think i think i've openly mentioned it on other shows <laughs> so since uh you know uh yeah. but uh, yeah i i but uh, to me it's like you know and, and, and i'm just curious like Okay, so you said that, uh, yeah, well, yeah. let's not get into specifics, but there was a great deal of pushback that you had. Yeah, so what happened show. was is that, like, no. people who we knew in the scholarly community, this mm. was more from my ulama, this was, like, from people of, like, ulama were, like, you know, this is, um, you know, and I'll, I'll, after we're done recording, I'll share with you the story. No, no, I, I fine, made, yeah. you know, when we're offline, um, I, I, you know, but I think that's where um, it was, um, we were like, okay. Cause that, that was, that was mentioned, but we were like, that's kind of like, we also looked at it as like, well, our intent is, it's like, how, how do we draw the line? Our intent is to corrupt people's understanding. Yeah. Uh, we also believe people have agency. Like that's right. I think but person at the end of the day, it's like, I assume my, my listener um, is an intelligent individual that can pick up on things and has their own views. And I don't expect them to agree with everything I say. I, if we say something, we expect them to, you know, verify or, you know, take another opinion because at the end of the day is most, you know, the way that I, th- I think that's just natural. I think that's what we do. I think we hear something. It sounds interesting. We're not going to just buy it right away. We don't, we don't do that. We go out and like explore it a little bit more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's where, I think I like to give, I like to feel like the listeners have a lot of agency and, and they're smart and they're, you know, if they're listening to the podcast, they want to hear uh, engaging conversation, even if some of the stuff might not fit, but 
this idea that you know we're out here to spread deviance and you know there's a that's kind of where it's just like that but but i think there is thing there are things that i've seen that we should be more careful with especially yeah. when it comes to misrepresenting individuals yeah and saying things about people that they did not really say exactly and being a no, little loose you know i think we need to yeah i think we i really think that we need to and when i say we i mean people like whether it's podcasters or people who are out there providing content like this right need to be very um uh, uh earnest and very um um intentional with trying to you know trying to create uh opportunities and in, in spaces where you know we prevent or we push back against this kind of balkanization of like where people are getting their information, what people are listening to, you know, I, I want to get away from that. So like to a point that you made earlier about how, you know, people, listeners of diffuse, like, again, going back to that Venn diagram, yeah. like, you know, what is the, I, I, I'm curious what the Venn diagram looks like of listeners of diffuse congruence and listeners of, you know, mad mom Luke's. And if it is, a, if, if, if that overlap is very little, then I think that we can we can create a space where we make that a whole. We we can make that a circle where mm-hmm. where, where people are okay and understand that we can listen to Mad Mum Blues, we can listen to Diffuse Congruence, you know, we can and there's so much other content out there now. Again, I've yeah. seen the landscape completely change in seven years. Right. Um, you know, uh, and and so yeah, I think we need to do that. I think we can have these, I think a, this is a great start. I I, I want to continue doing that. Um, you know, and so, yeah, I, I hope that, uh, w- we as content content providers can take the platforms that we've been afforded seriously enough to, to like, to do that, you know, sure, for sure. And as we final thoughts, anything in the, what's, what's, what's next for you guys? Wow. What's next for us? Well, well, I haven't, so I haven't like mentioned it like on this particular podcast. So obviously, you know, as you, as you know, or as listeners who are within that Venn diagram know, um, you know, we, we, uh, our, our longtime co-host, my longtime co-host Zucky left the show at the, at the end of last year. Um, I now have a new co-host Omer. Um, you know, our, our goal is to just continue what we've been doing. Um, to me, you know, consistency and, you know, uh, making sure that we are on top of like the frequency of the show is important. We've always been comfortable with either once or twice a month kind of being, uh, being our, our, uh, touch point. Um, I don't see us venturing beyond that just because of bandwidth and, um, you know, just because of the, again, but by virtue of the format of the show, which is uh, having guests on Mm -hmm. as opposed to just me and, Omer or me and Zucky in the past pontificating, although we've had those episodes, Mm. but we've kept them few and far between. So um, that's, yeah, I'll say that's kind of, um, yeah, just continue doing what we've been doing, um, you know, and uh, that, yeah, that, 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 that's about it in terms of the future of the show. Um, And then if they're not familiar with the show, where where can they listen? (laughs) Oh, Sorry, I mean, say that again. Can, if they're not familiar with the show, first time oh, they're gotcha. about thank it, you. W- w- where can they? <laughs> you're like you're like throwing me an alley oop, and I yeah. keep like air. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> totally missing it. Or like in in Urdu, like you're giving me a nivala, and I'm not even like taking the nivala, right? Like it's like you're just giving me a morsel of food, and I'm not even. Oh, anyway. I don't even know because I'm Bengali. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, I knew, sorry, I knew that. <laughs> that's but you, that, are you like Urdu? That's that's a, that's a I'll, I'll count that as a microaggression. From uh, West Pakistani to an East Pakistani. Are you Pakistani, bro, or are you Indian? I'm Indian. Oh, so, I, I, I so, so we just canceled our microaggressions. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right. So I was just about to say, like, I, you got microaggressed by a, 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 a granola crunching liberal hippie from, uh, you know, from California. What does that say about you? Yeah. But then you just microaggressed me, brother, by saying that I'm from Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, um, sorry, but people can find us. Uh, yeah, first of all, facebook.com slash diffuse congruence. Uh, we're available on all of your plat- uh, podcast platforms. Um, and so you can, wherever you listen to and download good podcasts, um, you can find diffuse congruence. Um, you can find me if you are asking, um, personally, you can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I'm, uh, Pervez F. Ahmed. Um, uh, and, uh, we're also on Twitter. Our show is on Twitter, diffused C. But, uh, yeah, please do check us out. Um, if you have any thoughts, comments, uh, I'm going to, by the way, uh, I, I should just say this while we're on air. Uh, I have full intention of, uh, cross pollinating this episode and, and hosting it on our platform as well. If with your permission, absolutely with your, I, even if that's yeah, okay, you, you are 
free to like I, I I would appreciate that actually. That way yeah. people can, you know, I think this kind of collaboration can go on both, right? Because there you go. This won't be on the Mad Mum Luke's platform. This is gonna be on the Sultan Distinguished platform. Yeah. Um, which is my, you know, this this podcast and the YouTube channel, etc. So um that way folks can like from your audience, if they're if they like what you know they hear, maybe they can go check out what what I gotta say too. And, right. and I know we've tried making it happen, uh, Maheen, but and I mean yeah. this sincerely. Like, we should definitely try to get that episode, you know, on the books uh, yeah. with regards to Mad Mum Luke's and Diffuse right. Congruence. For sure. Uh, I'd love to make that happen. Um, yeah. And so whatever I can do to facilitate that. But uh, sure. yeah, thank you. As always, you know, people out there who listen, you know, um, uh, stay safe. Uh, uh, if you believe in, you know, uh, or forget whether you believe it or not, wear your mask, uh, practice social distancing, be mm. safe during the holidays. Um, you're not doing it only for yourself. You're doing it for other people. So do that. Um, and, you know, go with God. May Allah be with you all. Absolutely. And if you're not Muslim, may God be with you too. Or if you you don't believe in God, then, you know, well, whatever floats your boat. May the, may the force be with you. <laughs> right, right. All right. And you know where to find us. Uh, you know, Pocket Cast, um, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, and then YouTube. This Obviously, if you're watching this on video, you're on YouTube probably. So. That being the best, my special guest, Parvez Ahmed. I am your host, Mahin the Podcaster, signing off for Sultan and Sneaker.